Wish this was my microphone like Bob Barker. Come on down. Like that. <laughs> yeah, I believe, uh, yeah, I can see that. Come on get, down. The get, one that's like really long. Get your pet spader neutered. <laughs> Are we gonna talk, are we gonna talk about about my favorite superhero? <laughs> you you wanna know who my favorite superhero is? <laughs> the, Spider Man, the hundred million man, <laughs> hundred million dollar man. I don't know. I don't know if it's dollars or it's pounds. Pounds. <laughs> it's pounds. Oh, the hundred million pound man. <laughs> he's starting to look. I don't know. He's got a, the mohawk now. The glasses with the side things on him. The blinders. <laughs> uh, like I bet they're is he, is golden. Is he really a horse? Golden <laughs> horse blinders on his sunglasses. <laughs> Uh, you can't let that uh, sun get in the sides of his eyes. That's the worst <laughs> kind of sun damage. What's up, Patty Power? Have. Lewis Hamilton, for those who don't know, signed a three-year, $100 million deal with Mercedes. Good for him. Lots, lots good, more. good on him. 100 million pounds. Over three years. Making it, making him, I think it was, I, I, I kept hearing it on Sky, uh, the like the richest athlete in England over like anybody who plays like football or soccer or whatever there anything yeah anything just he's he's the guy there. I read it was the third highest per year sports contract ever signed. Holy crap! So, so qu- quite in, a chunk of change though. Holy guacamole! Yeah, I converted to U.S. dollars. I came up with fifty one point six million a year, so like one hundred fifty five total oh about boats or or thereabouts. I didn't do it. In, this part I didn't do in U.S. dollars, but it was uh, if you like divide it up into minutes, it's he makes sixty-two pounds a minute, twenty-four hours a day, three sixty-five for three years. Six, That's some beautiful 60 man. Sixty minutes per hour. Jay, what are you doing? Oh, hey, hey, guys! <laughs> I just hear rustling. Oh, I, rustling I, I, I brought, I brought many things for today. <laughs> Don't worry. Let, just let me let me lay it down here, okay. um, and 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 then I'll, I'll get back to you guys on that. But check it, check out the next step because uh, actually we'll get back to we'll get back to hundred million pound man ish and the rest of the program. Um, but this is something that I saw in 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 the in, in the depths of the internet. So I get you know how it, it's Monaco this weekend, right? Um, and usually they do this thing for charity, right? Um, where like they have um, I think like just famous people play uh playing a for you that see formula one drivers versus team mc monaco star team i think it's just like old like soccer players versus formula one drivers oh my god um <laughs> playing soccer in a friendly way and it's, it's just done to uh to do whatever to promote to collect or... money well no it's, it's, it's for charity right right but, oh okay so over here it's it's saying like like who's in who te- in, in what team yeah right so you can see like Whatever, whatever. But I am interested in this. <laughs> Look at the last one here of the of Team F one. <laughs> Susie Wolf is the mascot. <laughs> Isn't she just though? This is she in every single thing. <laughs> look, look at that! Look at that! Zoom in! Zoom in there! This, Susie Wolf. They spelled her name wrong too. No. <laughs> yeah, it's missing an F. <laughs> <laughs> the mascot. Wow. Poor Susie Wolf. She can't she can't catch a break, man. <laughs> Not even in charity soccer. Are there any other women playing though? No, Maybe I think she's just, just a mascot. Yay. <laughs> Yay team. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> but Monaco, Monaco week Monaco Grumpy Weekend. I'm yes. very excited about Things this one. Things have already happened, if I'm not mistaken. Indeed. Ah, now, a lot of people, sick. I mean, if you're just a casual F1 follower, like this might come to a surprise. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, by the time that this podcast is out, probably tom- hope tomorrow, Mike. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Right. Uh, on Friday. Yeah. Uh, FP1 and FP2 would be over because they happened today, on Thursday. Yeah. Because in Monaco, uh, unlike any other. Friday's a holiday. Friday's a holiday. Uh, and it's it, somebody was asking on uh, on the FP1 show. Uh, they kept tweeting or the FP2. I don't remember exactly why. Why exactly? What kind of holiday is it? Because they don't have like a sort of like a National Independence Day, like many republics, like the U.S. We, they don't have like a Confederation Day. It, right. It, it's but it's supposed to be like their big holiday. What it is is Ascension Day, some sort of Christian holiday. I think they just is that where you get sucked up into the clouds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I, I guess <laughs> it's, it would make sense. Okay, but anyway, yeah, they, they celebrate that. It's just, it's just become a tradition, and pretty much every year, you know, like you pretty much know for the foreseeable future, um, you you know when where where the Monaco race when the like where, when in the year the Monaco oh, okay. race is gonna happen it always because it always is this same weekend oh, and from there pretty much from there they start building the calendar around it so then they know that um canada is probably after because what we said before that canada needs to accommodate like all kinds of festivals in the right. city and spread yep, out totally. throughout, the, throughout the season so it's usually this so they, they can usually pretty much say like for the next three years or so when exactly the monaco grand prix in 2017 2018 is going to be and by by that calculation when the canadian grand prix is going right to be. oh i see okay yeah. and and there's other there's always yeah. I'm assuming that there there must be some sort of deal with Monaco and uh, F1. Oh, M Monaco calls the shots. Monaco doesn't even pay a fee to, to Bernie for host for hosting the race. Oh, <laughs> what yeah, prestige! Oh, Holy yeah. shit, yeah, prestige. man! Yeah. From what I saw of the I celebrations, not even wow. Of, of, I, I, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. From what I saw the celebrations of Ascension Day last year, it's just drinking beer in the streets down by the hairpin, and that's pretty sick. I think that's it. Partying on the boats. You'd expect cars to fly or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just always been. I think there has there has yeah. been a, a Monaco Grand Prix even before Formula One mm. was a thing. Since 1919, I think. Yeah. Something like 29, 1929. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it, it was Monaco was one of the one of the Grand Prix. Grands Prix that existed before Formula One that eventually came together and say and said let's make Became a world a championship. World championship. But oh before that, it was just like the great price of whatever nation. So mm. the top, the top automotive competition in this nation is the Grand Prix. Boom, and then you know whatever from then on. It, it became Formula One after the war, after the war, but yeah, Monaco is has been there from the beginning. From the it's in the history books in more more ways than one. Good gravy. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good track. Have, have we even said what this is? Hey, uh, everybody! Welcome to hey. the podcast, the Formula One <laughs> Flat Out Fever podcast. Flat out. We need to get that that clip of that old guy saying "flat out." <laughs> flat out. That's done. <laughs> uh, yeah, check us out, flatoutfever dot com, and listen to bamboo dot com, Twitter, emails, all the all the stuff. social. Media. We're here. We're listening. Yeah, that's it. Subscribe on YouTube and iTunes. So back to the hundred million pound man. <laughs> what else he do was, we got on him? I don't know. I guess I think he owns about a hundred million pounds of gold now too. <laughs> yeah, just blowing his cash left and right on necklaces. He just buys just just, <laughs> <It's> just gold. Let's <laughs> get a, a room full of necklaces. I think. And and, and those silly sunglasses. Those so sunglasses are silly. Let me put it out there. If I could, if I could so wear them, if I could pull it off, I would definitely do it. So, did you see the uh, the press conference? You didn't see it, eh? For the drivers? The drivers' press conference? I saw it yesterday. I was kind of like uh, tuning in and out. But what, what'd you get? What'd you get? Okay, okay. Let's watch this one link here. Okay. Uh, the third one from the right side. There. This one? From the left, sorry. To the right. Yeah, there we go. So, so somebody asked uh, Lewis, so you just signed this three-year deal. You're like, you're just turning 30. You're going to be 33 years old when you get out of it. And... Uh, how do you think like you're gonna become you're gonna be competitive blah blah so uh, like we already we've already skipped ahead of his rambling answer right so he he basically rambled for a minute about how it's awesome to drive and blah blah uh, so let, let's let's hear him for a few seconds so. um and then the next one was sorry was the you'd be 33 at the end oh, of the yeah, contract that's, another one that's the not too was. that's pretty young still hopefully so which i'm grateful for and and uh yes definitely uh I definitely see me continuing past that. Yeah, yeah, watch it. Let's watch move it on. Now. Next one, please. How do you know? Pierre Van Vliet, F1 I, question for <laughs> Romain. Um, do you believe okay, Lotus has... As... <laughs> you ask him, like, you're going to be 33 when you get out of this contract. How do you feel your, how your prospects are going to be? <laughs> and he turns a button and asks him before his bike turned off. How old, how old are you right now? <laughs> <laughs> you definitely look confirm. like the youngest. Play, play it for a few more seconds. The, see, like, uh, he, sufficient he a little resources bit in here. terms like, of development to yeah, move old. up uh, the Button's top 10 old. fighting Red Bull and perhaps sad. Williams. Sad I think we are fighting Red Bull <laughs> at the minute. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, I can come clean with you guys now. So, 
<laughs> I thought we of bringing lines. something. Yeah, I thought of bringing something like uh, you know how I used to bring like something thematic. Yeah. Um, for 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 our little chats here about yeah. whatever weekend was ahead or before or just past. Of course, um, as per tra- tradition. I I couldn't. I you know as far as I tried. I mean everything in Monaco is like. Monaco is basically like Yorkville everywhere, but like everywhere is Yorkville. Right. You, you know, like, it's, a <laughs> yeah. Crazy, yeah, it's a crazy town like that. They don't really have like much, like I, there's no like national drink. I mean, I guess it would be champagne, uh, Chipagna, but they, yeah. they don't have like food of their own or drinks of their own because it, they're in the south of France. They're just a tiny little country. So you right. can't really say that, they, that anything is particular, Aren't they particularly all- Monegasque. Aren't- which is, is that it? Th- that's a denim, dem- oh. demonym. Oh but aren't there only like 5,000 Monegaskians or yeah. something like that? Monegasques. <laughs> yeah. yeah yes, I'm going to call rude. them Monegaskians. There's only like <laughs> 5,000 something of them. Yeah, a very small amount. So I people, didn't, people that are actually born there. I did, Everybody else just hides their money there and evades taxes. I didn't want to come here and show up with a bunch of French red wine from the South because... Why not? Uh, I don't know. Kind of don't feel <laughs> not good. I don't. I don't feel. Well, I don't feel like. Uh, you don't feel like that. I don't feel like wine. No. Right now. Hell yeah. Um. <laughs> but 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 either way, it's not that you go to Monaco to 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 drink the wine. You go there to have you know for the party, and it's the this this crazy mythical atmosphere, right? Yeah. yeah. And 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 the weekend. So I I am going to make some cocktails for you guys. Oh, actually, sweet. just just one kind of cocktail. Oh, okay. <laughs> actually, but, sweet. Yeah, but but pretty good. It's uh. It's a mojito. Oh, oh. <laughs> mojitos! Yeah. 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 I, I know what those are. Yeah, mojitos are, are, are Cuban in origin, but they like they're pretty popular in Europe. The, uh, sorry, no, I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm just uh, saying. I think I read somewhere that uh, they're actually the number one cocktail in Britain. The last time that they took a survey. Oh my god! Yeah. I'm is it because they're fun certain. to say? Because what? <laughs> because they're fun to say. <laughs> mojito. mojito. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure this is gonna be great, but. The first time I went to Cuba, the first drink I had when I got there was a mojito. And it was there one of go. the most fucking disgusting things I've ever had in my whole life. Oh, my God. But it's not because I don't like mint, limes, or sugar. Mm. But I'm, I'm not sure what it was about it. But I'm sure I'm sure this will be great. It, I, it was just did shit. You, did you need ice or it anything? It was just shit. I got, I got it all. I, bag of many things. <laughs> <laughs> I have you showed up to my house today just loaded. I th- I'm not sure if it's the most I've seen you with come to the house, but it was a lot. <laughs> the bag of many things. Bag of many things. And and um Oh you have a cooler down And a cool yeah. you brought yeah. a cooler on a bike. That was in the bag of many things. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't, yeah. I didn't see that cooler down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> just just you know, don't worry. I'm just gonna be here like pumping out mojitos all <laughs> the entire podcast. Nice. So this is, I'm all right with that. I'm excited. Yeah. Um I you know what? I love I, I do. I mean Monaco is not perhaps not not the most interesting race in terms of on track action, mm. but yeah. that is not what Monaco is about. Like you, you don't you don't go to Monaco because it's a technical circuit. You go to Monaco because it's in in some ways the the ultimate test for a driver um, because yeah. there's so many corners. It's so tight. It's, it's a so short. Tight. It's a short circuit. Elevation. Yeah, there's yeah, it's got elevation. Such a short circuit. It's the only track that doesn't. Uh, doesn't follow the FIA's 305 kilometer minimum. Don't oh, take too long. I think for them it's 260. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah cuz the laps are it's like as long as time-wise as most of the other tracks. Right. But the lap is like shorter. 60% of the length. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just flying around. <laughs> but it was cool. Forever. I was watching so I watched FB1 and FB2. It's this, the yeah. lowest average speed on this track though, I think. Yeah. So like something like 100 miles an hour. You need the highest downforce so your your aero team is like working like overload mm. on this one. Um So I was watching FB1 and FB2 and, and more on that later for sure, but mm. uh one thing that I that I that did resonate is that uh, on the Sky broadcast at least they were talking to I believe it was Pat Simmons from uh he's a, he's a CTO, a chief technical officer of Williams, the Williams team. Um, and they were just asking him back and forth questions, and he was basically saying, like, uh, at some point, said he said that, yeah, in Monaco, we let them, we let them go out, and we we want them more than with any other track to go out and explore the limit, like make some mistakes, crash into into in, in, into into something or other. It's fine because this circuit, more than any other, 
it's, it, it depends hugely on the driver. Mm. So, you know, there's there are, you know uh, many other tracks that are just highly technical and they do need like you know the the, the car plays maybe a bigger role. Right. But in Monaco, it's all about the driver. Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it because of that size then? Like the size. Well, it's, the- it's for many many stars align for Monaco. I right. say. I'd say it's it's it, it started as almost an accidental success, right? Yeah. When it first started, it just yeah. it, you couldn't if if Monaco as a nation wanted to have a Grand Prix, they could they didn't they couldn't they, they don't have many options because it's only right. uh, it's a country that th- that's what three miles wide. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> oh yeah. my God, it's yeah. barely a country. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's so it's small. barely like a city in the, in that regard, right? It, it's a city state. It's like one of the last three remaining city oh, states wow. in the world. <laughs> yeah, if they, if they ever if they wanted to build a track like this nowadays, like Singapore, somewhat comes close, but it's a lot wider. Right. I don't know. It's it's not exactly the same. Which I don't know. Yeah. yeah. This this track would never be built today. Is, no, is it would point. it would never pass the regulations. That is for unless there was something like someone with like a lot of money. Like, not even because it's just no. like just the regulations just right the, now are written danger, in a way yeah. that you couldn't you couldn't build Monaco really? and pass it as a as a grade A um, FIA track, right? Yeah, if you look at uh, like, I don't know. So Russia is not doesn't have the biggest runoffs, but it's it's so wide. And uh, but if you look at like the American track, the yeah. the Circuit of the Americas, it's just it's built in a wide, wide huge open area. The runoffs are gigantic. They're all paved. There's right. no there's no walls you could really crash into there. Holy shit! Uh, it's I don't see you've you've never seen a lap of this track. Probably not. It's I haven't played it. I haven't played it on uh, F1 simulator. Oh, game don't yet. even bother. No, <laughs> no, you're not gonna make it around. <laughs> I can do it. Okay. I can do it. Right. No, I accept I've been, the challenge. I've, I want to see it. Let me know when you make a full lap. <laughs> <laughs> For those listening oh, uh, in their earphones, sorry. Shit. <laughs> I have just opened a bottle of um, something club soda. Club soda. Club soda. Ex- <laughs> explosion. <laughs> Explode soda. Sorry, okay, it would it take me some time, with. Danny. It would take what? me some time, but I could do it. Okay. I was getting a good hang of, of driving. I'm sure it's do a ball. Yeah, not, 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 not by me. I play a lot of video games, so it made sense. All right, Again, I, I might be wrong. It's, it's, it's show high, us it's if high, you high. actually do it. You gotta show us. I'll, you know what? I'll GoPro it for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, me playing through the GoPro. <laughs> do it. Do it. <laughs> All right, see ya. Um. <sighs> Well, it's, yeah. It's, why don't we show, why don't we do like the the classic Santa one now? Let's throw it on. Right, That's the best. Let's watch Graham Hill first. Okay. 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 Do you, you get a, a run up instead of going backwards? Uh, is but, it on yours? Yeah, right, all the way on the left there. So th- this is one of the only tracks that has stayed the same all the way from the beginning. Pretty much, they you know they 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 they, they apparently ruined to back this year, but whatever. Like uh. But the, that's run at the same spot, like Belgium. First, here's another formula for Monaco perfection that we found okay. in the archives. Graham Hill of 40 years ago. Okay, oh hold on. Pa- pause this for one sec. Let's set this up for a sec. Yeah. This is, so, yeah, this track's been running since 69. Graham Hill is Mr. Monaco. Yeah, known as Mr. Monaco. He, he had, like, five wins. What, five wins? He had five wins from, between, in the 60s. I forget the years. Like, 62, 3, 4, and then, like... But he, he was racing against some giants of the sport, man. Like, back in his days, that they, when, when he clocked the, yeah. those, those Monaco victories. So, this is a clip uh, of, on, on YouTube from 1968 of uh, Graham Hill just this, kind of describing the track, the atmosphere, a lap. And you'll see, uh, for anyone that's watching, you'll see... Hello, into, uh, in, cl- cut in some video of the track, um, how it was. You made on a public road. Um, lampposts, trees, nightclubs, houses, <laughs> hotels, curbs, gutters. You know, it's it's a proper road race. And <laughs> in the yeah. Oh my the world, God! Where How motor racing was first originally oh, started it, it was, on it was, public roads and public highway. I think there was a sort of mental drive around this course from the start. Uh, you go down to Sandovot, which is a right-hander. How far is that? Well, that's the first How time um, this? Did you see that? after the start. Yeah, man. Now, this is probably this is like... the fastest bend on the course. If I we flash up the hill there and uh, change gear about halfway up and take fourth, back into fourth again. Then you're down into third again for a left hand in, into the casino square. Come into the casino square in a very, in a great flourish, because everybody's there. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> all your friends in the Hotel de Paris, of course. And uh, you arrive all across that nice end. You've just got time to flick it straight. Little short squirt. 
and then you, you put just, it you in see the bales of hay that's right the right where they go around the that's all the protection yeah that's all the protection there was look just fucking look this is nuts the car goes comes up and then goes over um, another crest. Well, while I'm going over this crest, you're on, a, you're on a great sort of drift, you know, with the, with the power on, and, the, and as the car goes over the crest, it does a little leap sideways, and the tail flies out again, and of course you must be ready to, to correct this, and of course if we're going too far for you, have overdone it, you'll slide out and just clip the, the guard rail. By the time we reach the tunnel, we're probably doing something in the region of about 120 miles an hour, and we go, Perfect oh, in this black hole, you know, that's all you see. Yeah. You flash out into the sunlight again. No arrow. High on power. And then you come to a bunch the, of trees the back there. in this corner. On the is, this, side. Is, this is what Bernie and wants back in this port. Cars like this, so seriously, no? <laughs> Probably. Before you hit this slight ramp. Otherwise, the nose, when you, the nose tends to hit the ground and you can wear your radiator away and all the water drops out. So this is just time miss the wall as you're accelerating away That's down fucked. past the... These were definitely, um, definitely pits, down you know, different days. Heaven, which is another first the Halcyon. That mustache, though. Yeah, that's a mustache. That is a, a proper mustache. mustache. Did you hear what he said, though? You don't, at the end of the straight, you don't want to hit your brakes too hard because your radiator will scrape the ground and your, all your water will drip out. <laughs> What? That's how those like, are alien words in, in for, Formula One. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look okay. at that. Look how let, it's changed. Let, let's assault the ears one with a Senna now. Like, okay, this is jumping up to 1990. But I, I, I just, just want to make a remark. Could, could, could you go back to the previous one? Yeah. And and in in I'm I'm glad that you pointed. Yeah, it's that's how it used to be, right? Yeah. And and this is just one of the one of those things that is like that I find beautiful about the sport is that, um. It's it's how I tried to explain it to you at the beginning. It's, it's it's a set of rules that they hand to these constructors, and then they say, okay, stick to these rules. Now build the fastest car that you can build yeah. with that. Yeah. This at the time they were the fastest cars with all the technology <laughs> the that formula. was available, all yeah, everything, all the resources that that, that that you could put into. You know, if if a group of people that the, the experts in the field sat down and tried to come up with the, with with the fastest cars, they'd come up with something like this. Yeah. And this is <laughs> and 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 since then. Things have changed and things have evolved, and the 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 sport has evolved with them mm -hmm. for the most part. But I think that's that's one of the key points right now, as well as the safety technology. Right, because right now we're at a point where like we're pretty much having to ask uh, as fans for the sport to move forward because it's that's what it's lacking. It's lacking the staying with the times that it used to be known for. You right. Know what I mean? Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a similarity here between Graham Hill's car and Ayrton Senna's car, you'll see. Uh, uh, Aaron Senna was the last man to die in Formula One. This might have something to do there. Both of them, you see, have the, they have their shoulders out, out of the car. Like, the, the, this like is now great. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, the drink. Get oh, actually, be, be, and before you start this, Senna one, I, I actually want you to um, to take a look because before this, uh, before the podcast today, I pretty much spent all day watching uh, a few Senna um, things around around Monaco, and I forget who it is that was describing it, um, but he he said, pay attention. Because sometimes you see Santa approaching a corner, and mid the like in the middle of the corner, he go like this, right? He like kind of jerk the wheel, and he did that because he like he was just in such supreme control of the car that he actually like made the car bounce like and and just turn completely like kind of jump directions in the middle of a corner. Oh my just god! Just to shave more. There was one uh, one qualifying session. Uh, back in back in his days, I forget if it was eighty nine or ninety or eighty eight even. Um, but he was he was uh, his teammate Prost. They had the best car, but even then he was a whole minute ahead on qualifying in Monaco, like he, from first to second. It was retarded. But anyway, yes. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Just, this is this is towards the end of the like truly truly dangerous era of this track in Formula One in general, but. Yeah. Let's watch, watch it. Watch Santa, a master at work. Get, get the volume to the max for this. Shit. And just look how wobbly and bumpy everything was. And he's like fucking hauling ass. Why does ass. it look like is he's so close to the front wheels? Because that, that's just that the, car, just, the way the car, yeah. car was? Oh. Remember, he's in that car that you were like, it looks like a cigarette. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> It has music over. Oh, 
tunnel, different sequence. Obviously, they must have had it later because there's no radio through the tunnel. They used it, didn't used to be. Now, is it still this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll see. Right, I guess. We'll, oh, my gonna, God. Yeah, we're just here. Like, so, Sorry to the listeners. We're just here in awe yeah. of, of, yeah. of the sheer mastery. Ayrton Senna won Monaco That's record it. six it's times. Thomas. One Holy more victory fuck. than the man. One more than than Mr. Monaco himself. himself yeah. And he actually won. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll take another one. He actually won five in a row. Which was also better than Gra Graham didn't get his in, in, in a row. Hey, speaking of, of uh, winning in a row, uh, somebody pointed this out, but apparently Nico Rosberg has never won two races in a row. Ever? Ever in his career. I know. Uh, I know. He's, he's had like a first, second, first, and I think he's had a, a couple of those uh, and a first DNF first, but never first, like two firsts in a row. I don't oh. think he's going to get this weekend. No. He's going to have the guilt. On his shoulders from last year. For real, yeah. Oh, well, what happened last year? Oh, my. What did happen? <laughs> oh. I, juice. <laughs> well, I almost don't want to talk about this. So I'm just going to let Danny talk about this. Because I it's it's just being, like, overkill. And we're going to see it. Like, anybody that's actually watching the race pre-shows, you're going to hear about this if you haven't heard about this. But, Danny, please, take, take us back a year ago. This is nothing like what I had in Cuba. It's terrific. Uh, the, the qualifying, the whole qualifying thing with Rosberg? With, with Rosberg, yeah. So he came up up to the top of the hill, yeah, going way too fast, and didn't fully slow down for the next corner, and he was going too fast again, and then uh, going down the hill. I don't I don't know the names by heart of these corners, but uh, here uh, pull up uh, pull up that map that I told you that we could reference to. Yeah, da, da, da. there it was, comes comes to the top of the hill, so. Uh, you after the, right after the casino, before uh, Mirabeau, yeah. right at Mirabeau, he turned off to the left there, right at the end of qualifying. And uh, I think in the press conference this year, they asked Hamilton about it. Like, how do you think what's going to happen in qualifying? And I think he said something like at the start, I don't know if it was at the start of the weekend or the start of the season. The they, year. They flipped coins for who was going to go first. And I guess they just alternate throughout the, the for the rest of the season. Oh, shit. So the advantage was... Rosberg was first. And the he, first race. He had already claimed pole. Okay. There was still time in the qualifying session. And the time was winding down. But after he had claimed pole, and Hamilton still hadn't done his fast lap because he went out second. Yeah, this is crucial. So so, so Rosberg came and he, he crowned pole. But it was temporary pole until the session was over. Right. Uh, uh, Hamilton had time to smash him. Anyone could still go faster. Yeah, right. So he went too fast up the hill. And... Uh, Right at Mirabeau, turned to the left into the runoff and stopped there and didn't fully go all the way into the runoff and <clears throat> the yellow flags came out. And Hamilton didn't get a time, qualified second. So then there was a whole conspiracy oh, speculation wait, that he did and, on and purpose. He, and he parked the car in such a way that the, the yellow flags couldn't be removed easily. Or as in like they yeah, yeah, like he didn't go into the right into the runoff where they could have kept on running, most likely they would have just let so it think, go. So are you are you thinking he did it on purpose? That was a whole a lot thing. of people think yeah. Ooh. I think I I was watching Sky last year and they kind of squashed it. Like I think um Half of the guys there, and I had my I had my doubts. You know what? Let's be honest. I had my doubts the first time I saw it, just because I was like, "What?" But the more and more you see it, like it almost yeah, looks man. it it, too, it looks too set up, too staged almost. Mm. Yeah, but, I think he did it on purpose. But then again, people like Fernando Alonso, like later on, were saying things like not about that this particular incident, but another one where like he, they're like, "Oh man, like Nico Rosberg, if he's if he's like." cheating with that precision like he must be a surgeon or something <laughs> yeah that's that, that's one like alonso quote because he just but i think it's it might have just come to him like that he's like i i'm in first there's almost no time left cause this to end he's like oh, i could crash and then uh, instead of crashing he just stopped there and it stopped the session i don't know i kind of think he did it on purpose no yeah it, it, i think i think maybe I'm not a big rosberg fan though 
<laughs> nah, he seems kind of like a little. Well, and and after squirrely. that, he got he got he got, so he got pole right. obviously, and um, then he started the race and he led from start to finish. So and that was did he win that one? Yeah, he won. He won that one after pole last year. Jesus, and um, that was the start of that's that's what turned the tide. That's what he pretty much after that he was basically in the lead of the championship t- till the end of the year. Now, do you guys think that? Yep. Because because what what you said before about how about how points. Monaco is based on the driver, mm-hmm. and clearly Mercedes have they have great cars. Yes, they must. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're so, the hard to beat. The hard to beat. So, are you, is there a good chance that we won't see a Mercedes in first? I don't think so. No, you still Not think you quite. still think it's going to be Mercedes. It's going to be one of them too. Really? Yeah. yeah. Unless it rains. Oh, okay, it's, which which it doesn't look like it's going to rain. Oh, do we have do we have the weather report? I had a weather. <laughs> Mike, you gotta you gotta do this for me. Come on. I tried Let's to go. find a thing, but it it's definitely does not look. It's yeah. gonna be somewhat humid, and it might rain. Hold on, let me see. If... Yeah, it's Sunday. Yeah, maybe maybe not. Maybe the uh, long term forecast. Was so Monaco is like right here, right yeah. right by the coast. Yeah. yeah. So this is the, the closest little rain thing that you're gonna get. This one, and that's like Sunday morning even, well, and that kind of changes <laughs> throughout Sunday during the day. You watch the first two practices. How much did it rain then? What what kind of temperature are we talking about? Talking is it gonna be like the, reasonably cold still? Twenty ish. Uh, was that Sunday? Saturday, Sunday, twenty-one degrees. Okay, so still pretty reasonable. Tires are gonna be working at their peak performance. If if it's not gonna rain, then we're 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 pretty much expecting like a Mercedes domination. I would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You watch the practices. How much did it? How much did it rain? In the did second practice, is it rain? It rained quite a bit. Okay. Here, yeah. uh, should I should I just jump in on the on the on the FP one and FP two report? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. I didn't get a chance to see him yet, so I guess I'm gonna have to skip him. FP1, FP2, where, um, uh, where, where are we on there? No, I don't, I think I, I, I didn't send you any okay. links for the, for that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to watch them. Cool. FP1 and FP2 were great. Well, actually, I like FP1 a lot. I, 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 I got to see a lot and, um, there, there was good, good commentary. If I, if I can, uh, let me just refer to my notes because I took some notes this time. Um, <laughs> At the beginning in the pre-show, Hamilton was like, um, "Oh, you know," and you, I'm sure, like this weekend, you're gonna hear this a lot. Hamilton's like, he he, he just does not get tired of saying, "I'm my own manager now." Like, I can, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, since, since I'm my own manager, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I could, I think I could. I, he actually said this. He said that he, he he thinks he he could have a future in in, in, man- in managing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, last last weekend, whatever the week before, he was complaining about how it's uh, so much work, spending hours reading this eighty-page contract, and he could barely understand half of it. <laughs> he said that himself. Well, it seems like he got it done, and that was obviously like the talk of uh, of the podcast. It is, you know, at the beginning of the show. Um, but anyway, yeah. So Lewis Hamilton, uh, you know, if you're looking for, uh, if 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 one of our listeners is looking for some future manager, he, he can do it. Hey, I'm, man, if you can get me anywhere near hundred million, I'll sign. I'll sign with him. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, <laughs> Some representation. Borrow one of those chains. <laughs> Just one of those chains could probably pay for your house, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he has never been on pole there. Give me one of the chains. Hamilton has never been on pole in Monaco. Fuck you, Rosberg. That's yeah. why. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. He's, he's going to be extra pissed then. Oh, for sure. I think... I, think, uh, I didn't know that was a fact. Lewis is out to kill. And now, now because he's never yeah. won in Monaco, right... Um, and, and he definitely has to just for, just to, to kind of vindicate what happened last year. I think that he, he, he's, he's, he's out to kill. Now, a a couple of things have changed obviously since, um, and it's that Lewis, he used to live in Switzerland, but he has moved to Monaco. Yeah. Um, right. And, and, uh, Nico Rosberg lives in Monaco. Now, (laughs) Lewis said something that he spent pretty much the last two weeks, uh, since Spain training and just being in monaco he said i was here i didn't move i was here in monaco the the last few weeks probably like just driving around like we saw that that in the middle of traffic just (laughs) that's not the thing (laughs) yeah or but also here's what i think i wonder like i wonder how much of this happens because you know obviously um out there it's it's like you know it's a tiny city right you do end up um like right bumping into like 
each other because like there's there's the, just the one strip and whatnot. Rosberg was up in his balcony with his binoculars, like watching Lewis jogging, no. jogging down. <laughs> I just I just wonder I just wonder to what point does does the the psychological battle <laughs> go into that? Like, would you would you yeah would you keep tabs on him or like or is Lewis maybe now like just kind of following Nico? Nico I would keep tabs on him. Like following Nico to like the grocery <laughs> store. You know what I mean? Like just 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 what following is he eating? him. Yeah. <laughs> How many cucumbers did he get? <laughs> When, did, get when would they have one, arrived in Monaco? Well, they they both have been there since Spain. So oh, okay, yeah. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I guess biking or walking or whatever, you have lots of chance to check out the track. I was reading about it takes uh, six weeks to build up all the barriers and put get the get the city ready. Holy but shit! But the, the so cool it's thing being is semi race ready for a while. Can you pull up the uh, the, the map of, uh, of of the track again? It's just right beside this tab. Yeah, okay, so right around here, down here, number seven, the corner 17, La Rascas. Um, it's called that because of a, of a club, basically, a, like a pub, a, a bar. That's, that's at this corner. It's the, 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 the club La Rascas. Um, and you see that after all the Formula One is done and all the car racing is done for the day, during the during the weekend they kind of tear some of the barriers down and they make it public accessible because people like still like so people have the opportunity to not not just to drive around here for, for some of the circuit but for example here it's la rascas basically like extends all the way out onto the circuit and it has like a he basically a huge multi-level like a patio. patio yeah where like people just like party there all night um and and one of the things that they were saying is like yeah like <laughs> You, so 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 you do your your F one runs like Friday or right now Thursday, um, and, and and the track is nice and rubbered in, but then now at night like people are just spilling beers on it. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying. Yeah. I saw last year. I saw some pictures and video of like what happens on the Friday. Yeah, oh, people shit. are just out in the street drinking beers on the track and whatever. But it's that kind Plus, of access that that makes Monaco so attractive too for the fans. Even oh, and. Yeah. It, 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 20, the 365. Last week we watched a video of some guy driving through traffic in uh, in regular city times. You know, what I mean, there's like planters on the road and yeah, yeah. concrete dividers and stuff. Yeah, but this it's week, like city. this weekend, even if you if you go and, and a lot of people say that it's that it's expensive as fuck to go to Monaco because Monaco yeah. is expensive. Like hmm. n nowhere you can expect to pay like any less than 10 euros for a drink for example oh, um, no it's and, and and it's retarded and like you know it just just because there's so many rich people and there's so many rich people here now um and it usually coin, coincides with the butt end of uh, the Cannes mm -hmm. music festival so tons of celebrities come here after that right um it, so it's money 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 right <laughs> but you can still do it on the cheap it is possible i look i've looked into this and just being there because you could you don't have to stay in monaco it's right nice is so close that you could find much better prices around the south of france then commute to monaco mm -hmm. and spend spend all, spending all day there from what i've heard is is unbelievable you you just like run into people like like you could you could like just on the streets or like just having a coffee or whatever or just you know being in the same pub as you are it could be like david coulthard or like you know what i mean like or beyonce <laughs> yeah <you know? laughs> well no they probably go to the vip parties that, like schmucks like you and i wouldn't be allowed no. in but <laughs> we're schmucks <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> so yeah that, that, that could, anyway so let me go let me get back to fp1 <laughs> um because okay so w uh, what else happened um Rosberg was pushing it to a limit there at the be like at the beginning and he actually fucked up his wing or like he, he hit the wall and they just called him right back. Uh, yeah, he Sucker. was he, yeah, he was he was definitely pushing. I think he's like feeling under pressure. Mm. I think he must be. Um uh Daniel Ricardo and uh, and Bottas and even Alonso uh, just up and down uh the paddock people just kept going into the runoff areas. Um if you if you I saw Zoom out. Mary, uh, Mary crashed. Mary, I, saw, I saw that. Yeah, Mary crashed in, in FP2. I um, saw some highlights. Oh, so, okay. yeah, well, so, yeah. So here, a San Devod, you can turn right or to the left of it. There's like a pretty safe runoff area. Uh, just people kept get, just kept going in there. Like, and, and just Purposely? unexpected. Well, because they lost control of the car and like right. that was like the safest thing to do. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it happened. It happened repetitively during mm -hmm. FP1. So you could tell that people were just 
trying to find the limit, trying to find what to do um, in, in, in Monaco, obviously. Because uh, with these newer engines and uh, they didn't know how the, the, well, you don't know how the weather's going to turn out in the end, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they're trying to find the limit. A lot of drivers just were spinning out and whatnot. Uh, it wasn't just uh, Nico Rosberg. Nico Rosberg, I think, was the one that, that had the, the biggest damage in FP1, mm. um, or at least certainly the beginning of FP1. Um, <laughs> at some point during during the transmission, I, I just I came to the realization that Johnny Herbert is just so much like a, a much better at commentary that he is at doing the, the grid walk. Yeah, he, he's pretty good. Yeah. He, but he he was so he was describing uh, going down to back here. So where's the back? So Tabak is there, and that's that's the new the part that they've massively changed, or the the biggest change in years. That's Monica. where Prince whatever built his parking Albert. parking garage. Prince he, Albert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why they modify it. Yeah, but is anyway. So Johnny Herbert was describing. That's where it. the three meters came from, right? That's the track is. The, I don't know if you know the track is three meters shorter this year. Oh, they yeah, had probably yeah yeah. So uh, they're resetting the lap records because of that because of oh, three really? meters. <laughs> yeah. Shit. So Schumacher's record, I guess, will stand forever on the uh, three meter longer track. Mm -hmm. so thanks True. for. Enjoy your fucking parking garage. <laughs> yeah, ruined no, history. Really. Ruined yeah, history. ruined racing history. Especially with these cars that are supposed to be seven seconds faster, or six seconds. Um, I, I just uh, sent you a link there, Mike. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Johnny Herbert was was saying about um, here that just going down here into back, and he described it in such a way that it really took you back and like it put you in the cockpit with him. Uh, it was actually pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool to hear. Um, and he's basically saying how at the at the end here, um, he you use so much of the track and you you almost try to like bump the armco on purpose. On the outside, there's that little wedge there that they go past it, and then there's like an extra two feet, and they kind of slide into it. Yeah, yeah, some of that. And he and he, and he said that if you hit that, or at least in his days, you could hear reverberate all the way up like a. That was like following your car. <laughs> oh shit! Wow. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it sounded really cool. Um, but but yeah, yeah, again, before you move on, show that little GIF I just sent you there. This is what Jay was just talking about the, at the end of the straight there, the runoff area. Yeah, Bot that one. But has yeah. pull, pulled a donut to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Saved himself just at the last second there. Yeah, that was Ooh. last year. This is last year. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh, and it's from NBC. Close this now. NBC sucks. Yeah. Sorry. Um, their, their commentary is really bad. Oh, yeah. is it? It's, <laughs> it's so bad. Alonso went no down in there too, even about. though. But I mean, Alonso was was doing pretty good, and then he like he went in there. Um, and all of this happened during the first half an hour, actually. Um, then, I, you know how Rosberg um, wrecked his car from going to the barrier, right? like the first half an hour yeah and, and you know how they have that rule that during the first half, half an hour they're allowed to try like the one extra set of tires they oh. have like a, they have one set of tires specifically for the first half an hour of fp1 to kind of uh, encourage drivers to go out and right. do something like, in fp1 right right um yeah cause, yeah so they fixed whatever was wrong with rosberg's car and they sent him out just before the end of the half an hour with the new tires not so because you know how they get they get penalty if they don't come back before the end of the half an hour with the old like with the with the first set of tires. Okay, I and, didn't know that. And yeah, and that that's what happened with Ericsson. Remember, they were saying that Ericsson almost got a penalty because he was like almost on like, right on the mark of bringing back the car before the end of the half an hour of the first half an hour. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this happened earlier in the year, but it, I didn't it, actually know. That. It okay. hasn't happened that somebody has gone out on the newer set of tires before the end of the half an hour everybody just comes into the pits chills there for half an hour right <laughs> and then comes out but no not rosberg like i guess because he, he 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 lost so much time at the beginning he just went out on first set of tires said fuck it and just uh, did a couple runs um nothing significant there at, at the towards the end of fp1 um you did see like a, 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 a so, some more action um after that um what what do we get? Um, Max Verstappen, he got second. Yeah, I know. I saw yeah. that actually. You know what's crazy? At like I I meet so many different people in like the job that I do. That it's, it's all I meet new I'm a new guy almost every day. 
And uh, this guy this morning was like, oh, did you hear blah, blah, just signed a blah, blah, million dollar contract. So apparently the, I don't know, you probably know this, the Toronto Maple Leafs <laughs> oh, yeah. coach. Yeah. Well, you they, got, they, you, they, they pretty much got the best coach they could possibly have gotten. He, he like won the Olympics and won the uh, Olympics. Was super consistent. Was it the, the Detroit, Detroit guy? Yeah, the Detroit guy. I used to be a huge Detroit fan, but not when he was uh, coaching it. So he just signed the biggest coaching contract of all time. Yeah, ahead. fifty million dollars over eight years. <laughs> Hamilton's like, <laughs> yeah. That, well, that's no. It's, that, it's a lot though. That's a but they're but they're caps, right? And that's why it's so crazy because the team only has like sixty-seven. <sighs> Point five million dollars for their entire team, including staff. Well, yeah, I mean like coaching staff. Oh, so the in the, the whole team, like per year, that's what they can spend the on. The league has a cap for the whole team, what they can. Yeah, oh, and I, I believe it slowly grows over time, depending on uh, the GDP, like the the how much money the, the inflation NHL's. and shit. No, not even inflation, but like. Yeah, I guess it's inflation, but the idea is just that they get more money every year. There's more fans every year, so. Right, okay. So I was like, sorry, I don't know. Sorry, dude. I have no idea about hockey. And then I was just... We're very excited he, he in threw, Leaf, he threw, Leaf Land. He threw his hockey at me. I threw the F1 at him. I'm like, but this guy, Lewis Hamilton, just signed a $100 million, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, yeah, I heard about that this morning. I was like, <laughs> what? What? I'm like, yeah, man, I've talked to like 100 guys about F1. And most of them are like, why don't you watch hockey? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, yeah, so I met a guy that watches F1. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're just hidden in 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 North America. They're yeah. sprinkled here and there. Yeah, <laughs> like this guy that does security. Just like outcasts. Just yeah. like, I thought I heard that fun, but I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes back. Yeah. yeah, I finally met one. What's up, Nate? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so I think n not much else really. I mean, Nathan, um, if you prefer that. What uh, full name? He'll let you know. What the hell? What what else happened? He's a big fan. Um. Oh. Um. Yes. During FP1, uh, Ted was talking about a couple of uh, things that he saw at the Ferrari. First and foremost, let's let's go this one. Was he wearing his sandals? It seems like they would let him, <laughs> let him wear his sandals over I, there. I I don't remember, but I think. Oh wait, no, it was too cold for sandals. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here he he here's the thing that he pointed out. This and he's basically saying that Seb Vettel. Look, uh, his car is the one on the left here, and the one on the right is, is Raikkonen's car. Seb Vettel getting the upgrades before Raikkonen. So the left side is Couldn't Vettel. they just be testing something? Well, they are, of course, but... He's right. got a big, bigger break and take there. They're asking Raikkonen to do this test with the old part versus the new part. And this is sort of what happened last, the, la the last time around. They gave... They gave Vettel all the upgrades that they brought to Spain and Raikkonen was running basically the old car and they did like after that they determined oh actually these updates actually work or in a way or another and the right. fact that you were so far behind is because you didn't have them <laughs> but <laughs> that's what happened yeah oh my god yeah so but but then again this is happening again and, and can you see this I see those two oval holes yeah I was just gonna point what, what that is out. this I, I would Speculate, Danny. I would guess that they're not going to have this in Canada, though. The left side one. And the the duct, the main duct all the way on the left side there. Yeah. You see that? Is way bigger than the other one. On the one. But it has to be for Monaco, right? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's probably what those oval now, holes are is, for, too. That what, what, I, I doubt those holes will be there in Canada. What am I looking at here? This is going from the slowest track to one of the, fast, the fastest. Danny, what, what is that? This is the t wheel. That's the whole braking enclosure. Oh, okay. Yeah. So where those two ovals are, you can see where the, and uh, that the two grooves on top. I assume here. That's probably where the brake dust flies out or something. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I know well, I'm I'm not a car magician. Okay, I don't that, know it like a surgeon, but so the brake disc is housed inside that carbon. It looks like a bucket, basically. Right. No, I, I can I'm, see that. I'm pretty sure like the point of that whole bucket is the air sh gets comp compacted into that hole on the left and those two. Yeah. And then just. Flows around in there. So this comes, goes into comes here out, and comes out, out comes that out, way. Comes, shoots out now the he, side. He, here's a point. Cool, cool as the brake. This brake here's down. a point. Make it like that, a thousand degrees. Yeah, here's, here's a point that Ted had. And he said that this is something that may just be working in tandem with that. You know how they have that 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 hollow nut in here? That hollow. Yeah, that's yeah, where the, the air shoots that. out. Yeah. <laughs> Some teams have it. 
Some teams, yeah. Ferrari definitely have it. It's like it, it, it. This kind of stuff basically tells, you know, an observer like yeah. us that 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 is a, a key component of 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 their whole aero package. Is definitely mm -hmm. that whole that whole that hole in the middle of uh, of the nut is not going to go away. Probably not, yeah, because they would have they would have switched back by now. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it would be. I guess they would have the same amount of air going through. You need the same amount of cooling for the brakes, right? They're yeah, stopping they, just as hard. But then but it's, the how, gets, how is that cooling distributed? You know what I mean? Like yeah, maybe it's, it's like comp compressing the heat into a smaller area and it's more pressure. Maybe it shoots the air further from the car. Oh, yeah. You know oh, I, mean? I see. The air's coming out. True. So it doesn't get sucked back oh, into those shit. radiators on the side, maybe. That's a good call. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just guessing. So, here. I haven't. I've never saw these pictures before. Right now, is there like a um? Because there's constantly like how much, how many, how many tokens you can spend on changing all your stuff. <laughs> that's for, that's for the engine only, though. Oh, that's for the engine only. Okay. For for so aero many. bits like this and yeah. and just bits in the car like like all the carbon fiber. There's still a diameter set in which you can right. Move. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You you have to you gotcha. you have to satisfy some rules, but it's it's definitely not like you can you can change them as many times as you fucking want throughout the year. Uh, you can two. you can change it all up, but you can't. There's no special time to test it. You got to do it during practice mm. when you also have to be getting your car ready for the, set up for the race. So uh, then remind me again. So there's a. Practice. There's two days of practice. Right. Two days of practice, uh, qualifiers, and then the race. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and that's what they're doing here. They're testing out. And so the two, like, they do first day. There's practice one and practice two. I think one's an hour and a half. One's an hour. Yeah. And then oh, practice one, practice two are both, both the both same. Hour. Like, yeah, okay. an hour and, and a half both. The second day they go a third practice, Which and then an yeah, and then a break, and then qualifying, and then in that break, if you're actually at the track, you'll be seeing support races. Like we will be. Like ah. we will be <laughs> very soon. And then Sunday's the race, the race alone. But yeah, so there's no time, there's no allotted time. This is one of the things that they've been speculating or talking about that they're speculating. There's a whole for, bunch, bunch of horseshit what they're saying about this. For 2017, is that for Friday, instead of having practice, bringing back open, test, open testing on Fridays. Oh, wait, I don't think that that's bullshit. I think testing. that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it'll happen. No, what the, this is, they got they, away from all, it because they've also been as, actually talking about just getting rid of Friday practice altogether, man. Yeah, there's, so there's been talk both in both completely opposite directions. So who knows what will happen? They got, originally got it's rid the best of that, all that. Yeah, these drinks are good. Yeah, they're super tasty. They originally got rid of all that extra testing because of money concerns, spending too much right. money. So I don't know. crazy. That's really interesting. So yeah, these pictures. The left one is Vettel's brakes, and the right one is. Uh, Raikkonen's brakes. That's what. Uh, uh, uh correct. Yes, the, okay. the the left both, one is both from this week. Both from FP one today. Yeah. Another thing that that uh, um, uh, Ted pointed out later doing in FP one is the next tab here. Is you remember how like sometimes they say in, in in between the engineers and the drivers they're talking about the front wing angle. Right. A lot of the time they're talking about just this particular termination here, specifically for Ferrari, but I guess a few other teams have it. But okay, I just oh, took pictures can, of like you can see the adjustment. Okay, yeah, there. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a little groove. Go, go down, go down. Yeah, like it goes like from. Oh wow! Yeah, those are some good pictures. Holy shit! Yeah. You got the camera you zoomed in there. I did that. Great Screenshots. Well, this is Sky. This guy's cameraman. Yeah. Ted works well with this guy. That's cool, man. They got right in there. Yeah, yeah. Ted is like Ted is pretty good at getting in there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the front wing. On the front wing, bit? front wing. Yeah, at the end. Oh, okay. The so, first picture I thought it was the the monkey seat. For no, 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 no. It's 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 this one. Oh yeah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's crazy. I, I I did not ever see that. When like, because this is one thing that they don't ever talk about on commentary or broadcast or anything because it's kind of secret you're not supposed to get pictures like that mm -hmm. i thought that they always adjusted the entire wing the whole mm. plane every all the all the levels the i guess whole not yeah. no that's what i always imagine uh, they probably do some maybe some maybe some teams yeah. do i don't know yeah yeah I don't know. i'm sure each team has a different solution but yeah the ferraris apparently only goes up until you know from from one to 12 degrees yeah that you that, that you can play around with and that is like I'm sure it must like the thing with Formula One is that changes like this because they're in the front wing, it affects the flow of the air around the whole car. Sorry. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right here, pass it, pass it. I'm, I'm just gonna keep. I'm just gonna keep. Oh yeah, he's a factory. Fill me back up. Yeah. Sorry, Cuba. Guillermo, in particular, 
<laughs> You're not getting, making mojitos. <laughs> I'm not saying that to be uh, racist or anything. His name was Guillermo. I remember that. He, he was a bartender <laughs> for the whole week. This guy got pissed drunk. One time he he fell behind the bar. Like we were drinking till like two or three in the morning. Yeah. He fell behind the bar. Like he went like, whoo. He was a, a big guy, man. He landed yeah. right on his ass. And then he got up and like he limped back into the, like, the back area. He was gone. Oh, Actually, an- another reason why I chose. That's why I remember um, Guillermo. Uh, why I started thinking about mojitos as like the cocktail to make today. Yeah. Uh, well, other than it's like pretty fucking easy. All you do is it's just sugar, lime juice, uh, rum, and so soda. Leaves. Beautiful. And mint leaves. And, and mint leaves. That's, you gotta, yeah, that's you gotta, the key. You gotta get in there with the mint leaves. That is that is one key step. Um, but yeah, it's um, in bar in Barcelona. And this is like this is my country. So from you know how the Spanish Grand Prix Barcelona a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So in, when I went to Barcelona, yeah. I just remember that um, this this I was with this chick. Oh my god, what a fucking annoying bitch. But um, we ended up stumbling upon this. Um, Barcelona is like it's it's crazy. It's a crazy city. There's 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 tons of party. It's it's very very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's in the old town, like in the old city, uh, part of it, like the, the the downtown core, I suppose. Um, there's all kinds of little like alleys and like just you and you can you can get lost there all day, man. Just going down and like like before like. Before you know it, like all of a sudden you stumble upon like a sweet bar or like a or sweet a piss jug, <laughs> yeah, or a p- <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like equal chances, honestly. Um, One time when he was living there, he sent me a picture, <laughs> like just saw this in the street, just jugs of piss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, I, the, 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 I and I, I couldn't tell you where it is. We just stumbled upon this street, and it was basically like it was clearly like a, a, just a very narrow road yeah. during the day, but it got blocked off at either end. Um, so for the space of a block, it, it, whoever just like had and there was this hole in the wall, and it was clearly just like you couldn't go in. It was just a dude there with like a bunch of like with a couple of speakers on either end, and like people were just dancing on that close off section of the road, and this dude. We, we got up to, we were, we were like, what the fuck is going on down there? This big guy, like this big, like this man, like th- this guy was like all muscle. Yeah. But I'm talking about like 350 pounds, like six foot tall at least. Big black guy, man. Yeah. Um, with a thick Caribbean Spanish accent. Yeah. Uh, so he might have been from Cuba himself. And he like, he had a big sign of like basically a cartoon version of him going like this. And he's, he's the king of mojitos. And he was just like, man, no, this this dude was a machine. Is he making think, them or drinking them? Making them. And so he, no, but he would make like, he had like a huge tray making like 30 at a time because people just kept coming and it was cheap. It was like, it was a, a euro or something, a mojito, a euro and a half or something. Yeah. So you just, you just went there and just, just another i like so yeah so he had like this this big tray just making mojitos all night and i just remember that so vividly so that's why i was you know mojitos yeah <laughs> from <Yeah>. barcelona <laughs> and here you go oh it's for me yeah oh that's fucking dope i'm keeping the rote going yeah <laughs> thank you yeah. sweet <laughs> magic cooler down there yeah um bag of many things <laughs> in the bag of many things um, so okay, so and, and what what else do I got? Okay, so after that, uh, FP two came about. FP two was pretty uneventful uh, because after the first half an hour, like for the last hour, nobody did much because um, uh, it, it, it started to rain. Mm. Um, I guess they're not not uh, predicting that it's going to rain for the race. I guess otherwise right. they would all be out there. Exactly. All, left, R- all morning. Raikkonen went into the same runoff that everybody went into um, during FP one. So again, like just. Drivers are having a problem there. I don't know what it is different about this year from last year, mm-hmm. but or at least drivers are starting to just push the limit of the cars. Maybe the higher uh, the higher revs, the higher torque is starting to show in Monaco because they're going. Mm-hmm. So the, the engine is operating at like med- the medium to low power range, right? But and that is when you get the turbo to kick in. Yeah. Just to kick in, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but they're, they're definitely pushing the limit there. Um, what else? Uh, <laughs> uh, there was the, at first, before the full rain came down, I think it was just a, a sprinkle of rain sent Roberto Mary into the barriers. Um, and that red flagged the, the race. Red flagged it. Yeah, it red flagged it for a little bit. Oh, wow. Then they sent people out. Uh, one of them was Maldonado. And that's when they told, like, Maldonado was like, hey guys, it's raining. Okay, Pastor. Please bring the car back, please. Hey, just, why don't you just come on in for a bit? Yeah. I saw I saw that little clip too in a highlight 
He was just crawling around the track. Just like, yeah. Oh, don't crash. Towards the end, it was kind of cool because it was so it was raining, and I think um, the first person out. Yeah. So, so some people did go out. Let's say uh, I think it was the the last ten minutes mm-hmm. um, of the practice, and the first one out. Uh, I think it was either the first or second one out um, was Alonso, and clearly Alonso wanted. Like he he's he's just. He probably requested that he was like he was like you know what guys maybe it's unlikely but just in case let let's let's see what the intermediates can do because mm. so far they haven't really hit, I mean not not at this circuit at least so they haven't had so so Alonso definitely wanted to explode and with him um, a few more people came out and it was uh, to be honest really really fun to watch because mm. it's Monaco it's it's the track when they're gonna when, where they're actually like wrestling the car mm-hmm. um, and they were and Alonso is specifically like they they, show, they showed a few on boards of him and just showed him like because the, the track was pretty much empty mm-hmm. when he went out um, and he was like just what he was doing on the steering wheel and around the track, the lines that he was taking, it was cool to see. He was something like twenty seconds off the pace of his own fastest lap before when it was dry, but still, it was it was great to see. It was a, it was perhaps what they're talking about, man, of of bringing like the more of the driver back into the equation. Yeah, uh, th- that's what I've been saying for quite a while. I don't like all the computer stuff; it's too much. It, but it but, seems like. Like it's it it's the it it's the circuit that dictates that you know what I mean like this, this one for sure well this one for sure but I mean if but, you want to have that sort of wrestling with the car like you're gonna have to sort of restrain everything else like have everything a little bit closer like it's gonna be snug on on um on the driving day right like I see other I I see other circuits I'm like ah there there's some room on this on this one. But Monaco seems like it's very unforgiving in that. That, regard. Yeah. that, that is a key word for Monaco. Unforgiving. Yeah. Unforgiving, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And but, also, sorry, just one final thought. It's yeah. just that almost like the illusion of tight spaces, like because it's surrounded by yeah. buildings everywhere. Like, yes, the tunnel. It's already claustrophobic in, oh, to some degree. Man. And that's, I think that makes for an interesting ride for sure. But uh, they, the FIA, I guess, would have to sort of have. Some sort of leniency on new circuits if they were going to do yeah, something. Yeah, it like won't that. happen. But do you, you want to get into the survey business a little bit? Yeah, let's do it. If they do shave, if if they shave five or six seconds off the lap, like their their goal is make these cars quicker, lighter, more downforce, more grip with the tires, mm-hmm. aggressive, whatever. Um, I think a lot. You'll see a lot. You'll feel a lot more like you do watching Monaco at some of the other tracks. Yeah. That's a lot. That's mm-hmm. like five seconds is a lot off of a lap. It's like no, that's a, it's, I it's, I know because I it's, race f- Formula One simulator games. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah five like, seconds is five, huge, right? Huge. Like five it's seconds huge. is huge. It's like worlds apart. Yeah, yeah. most tracks it's more than five, a, a bit more than five percent. Like that's a lot faster. Yeah, because they're already like at the limits. But most of like when you see uh, the questions that they've been asking drivers and their answers, they. They want the challenge. They're like, yeah, we need more of a physical challenge. The cars are, in some ways, easy as they are. As they are hard to drive, but in some ways, easy. Right. It's not like it used to be, especially some of the veteran guys like Massa and Button and Alonso. They're like, yeah, it's 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 awesome now, but it was really cool back then. Well, one in like two thousand seven, eight, nine, when it was really, really, really at the peak. Why don't they do something? Well, 2004 was the fastest cars, right? Okay, yeah, but they looked like with all those crazy aero and whatever. Yeah, I guess 2004 even they were like 21,000 RPM. It was insane. I remember when we talked to Tatiana, yeah, and in her sort of wrestle with the car because it is that that how she described it made it seem like it was much more of like like you're riding a bull than you are like in this, a dolphin or something like that. In their series it is a lot more cuz they yeah. don't have a lot of the electronics and they don't they don't have power steering in those cars do they? No. No. I don't think she, they said, do. she said they didn't. Yeah, that's what I remember. Like that's nutty. They don't have any power steering. But they, big, they, they, they want to they want to bring that to Formula 1, right? They want to like some people have said, "You know what? Get rid of the power steering." Yeah. Like I I drove uh What's the likelihood or percentage of that happening? It could happen that cuz that, that's an easy change. Yeah, that's an, that's an easy change to make, and it could save like you know pennies here and there. But it's it's an easy change that would add a lot of spectacle. I'd right. say. Yeah, these guys are gonna have to go back to the gym too. Like I, I said this, 
a few months ago we this came up i've driven a honda civic with no power steering and yeah. if you're like, trying to get into a parking spot you're turning like this like with you need two hands and you're, you're, you're really you're pulling on the on wheel yeah. jesus yeah but i don't know yeah it's it, it's a it's a totally different thing i guess so the but survey this, yeah the survey sorry th- that's <laughs> one of the big i don't know a lot a lot of the questions revolves ex- it's exactly that did you take the survey have you done it no i haven't why, why don't you do it right now while oh, okay while let's do it yes yes do it live yes do, uh, G- GP- Fuck it. let's do it live i remember it's at gpda.motorsport.com no right, i'm just gonna use this one so yeah you can go through it and then uh you can sorry talk what, about what it was it again it's gpda.motorsport.com Dot com. Sweet. Okay, let's do it. Are you are you showing this? Is this on? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Dot. dot com. Should be dot com. I'm pretty sure this is it. If not, Google will find it. Yeah, here we go. This is it. Globe, the GPDA, the Grand Prix Drivers Association Global Fan Survey 2015. Now, something that they were saying is that... It, it, it takes about 10... For anyone that's listening and hasn't done yet, I think this is open for about two weeks, and it takes you like 10 minutes to get through this. Get thing. your and voices it, out, guys. This yeah, is something that we've been heard talking and, about uh, for ages. Yeah, if you're listening to us, you must have some opinion yourself on this and care a little bit. Go do this. It's, it's pretty It's pretty fun. Like o- Honestly, it's... You, you have a chance of saying something. The, and during wow. during FP, I think, or the F1, either the F1 show or FP, or the end of FP2, they said that... It's, so it's only been out for 24 hours. And by, at the time that that went on, and this was like maybe hours, like maybe like 10 hours ago, it was up until, what, 25,000 25, respondents? Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't see that. So that's like, yeah. I did, I did this yesterday. Yeah. So it's it's key. I like how it goes up to seven. Yeah. What how, the how fuck? Interest, <laughs> how interested in Formula One are you from one to seven? That's, that's the first question. I haven't I haven't done this, by the way. I just... Oh, no. <laughs> oh you just talking been, Yeah, shit. I've been talking a big game, but... <laughs> okay, yeah. It, it's... I filled out another one because there was another um, there was another publication that put out their survey, and I thought it was like I, th- I thought it was the same thing, but uh, now I realize that no. Yeah, you know what? I uh, think- you know what? I, I found a problem. I can't find uh, pod racing. <laughs> <laughs> this question. Question seven: Which other motorsport categories do you actively follow slash like? Yeah, was uh, I duped? Did I do a non official survey? What no? What again? Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! I'm trying to get this guy drunk today. <laughs> <laughs> Passing all the drinks to Mike. Uh, uh, oh my God! I think Why I, did they want to know so much about me? I think I did an unofficial oh survey. God. Okay, never mind. Don't do this. This live. is really don't do this live. Yeah. This is stupid. Just turn this off. The survey. I uh, Jesus. Yeah. See, I think we both got duped into doing an unofficial survey. What? You guys got dominated. Yeah. I feel. Did you? I did you? Did you, feel, did you? Did you? Did you see the violation? Did you? Did you do the one where it was mostly just yes or no questions? Most of it was yes or no. Yeah. Oh, that one was a good survey. It was a good survey, but who? Who's gonna read it? The magazine. They're just getting a whole bunch of advertising. Oh yeah. Money. Damn it! All right. I'll <laughs> do the real one, anyways. I'm gonna go home and do this tonight. <coughs> the other one had some interesting questions, though. Like. Oh. This is what this is kind of what we've been sort of saying that um, let's just let's at least let, let, let's make it known wow. to the powers that be that there are people actively caring about this that the fans are not just gonna watch whatever is on TV and whatever you present to them the fans mm-hmm. actually like are taking uh, an active role and want to take an active role in in shaping the sport um in in in, in, in the, oh shit oh. <laughs> um. F1, uh, and if, if you look at the, at the organization of, of how the sport is run or whatnot, uh, you, ha- you have the government of it, which is the FIA, or it's supposed to be the FIA. And in theory, the FIA is, uh, is the, the International Federation of, um, of, of Automobilism, <laughs> if, you, if you can say it like that. That's, that's yeah. how they say it in French. So uh, International Automobile Federation, whatever. Um, and the thing is that for it to be an international body like it is, it has actually it has constituent members. So most countries, most, like if you're in a, if you're listening to us now, your chances are you are probably in a country that has a, an automobile club that is part of the global FIA, yeah. um, you know, for the federation, right? Mm-hmm. In 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 our case in Canada, 
uh, who our representative is on the FIA, like big committee, is the CAA. Mm-hmm. So that that's our right. that's local our, our okay. local autom- automobile club, the Canadian Automobile Association. Yeah, which is you know I guess in America it, it would be like AAA, AAA and yeah. in the st- in the UK is just AA. But not not the other AA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the one about Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mix Drinking. the two. Yeah, um, but e- either way, um, Don't mix AA and AA. It, 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 it the system is built so that I guess every country has like a, a vote in how things are done. But it, the system is so corrupt, mm-hmm. um, and it's and it's devolved in, 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 into such a the, such a problem right now that it's it's out of control. Like, these people, the people that are at the top, uh, Jean Todd. Um, who who ran, who is the president right now of the FIA? Mm-hmm. He's a second term president. On on his last, uh, uh, when it was time to to reelect him, he was basically going to run on a post because apparently that's like, like it's the tradition pretty much. You just if if you're an FIA president, you pretty much run on a post. But some dude, Jesus. some dude, like if within the the FIA organization, he dared to rise and he dared to say, "Listen, you know what? I'm going to run against you, and I'm going to run like." for like you know in the name of common sense and i wish that like people like could do something about this but no obviously it's it's gonna be basically an internal vote because we like you don't have enough people interested in like say writing notes if you're a caa uh, subscriber you're not gonna write notes and say hey listen there's an upcoming fia election to elect the the new president of the fia (laughs) uh you know if if you don't elect this other dude um uh, you know, I'm gonna cancel my subscription. Nobody does that. Nobody's gonna do no that. Nobody, cares. nobody did that because yeah. no, people don't even know that they could do that. Yeah. Did you know? Did you know that? <laughs> no. You, you as do you have a CAA? Yeah, I do. <laughs> as as a member of CAA, you technically have a, a voice into electing the new FIA president whenever that comes out. Just just by virtue of because I, the can the vote in ca- from Canada I is have from CAA. So much power now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. If enough people knew that, or if enough people cared, yeah. then then it would be a different story but no th- th- these 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 guys at the top have just been running on a post for so long that they've you know with every passing year they've removed themselves from the reality of the world yeah. so much that they they just they have no vision they, they don't know to to them the fans are just a bunch of sheep that yeah. will watch the sport no matter what yeah yeah no, and that's the problem that's yeah. what needs to change uh one of the uh advertised at least questions that i saw for this official survey but i thought was really interesting keep on telling yourself it's official but (laughs) no no not the one i took the one that you were just starting to take Mm -hmm. the gpda official survey was whether or not the fans consider formula one entertainment or sport why can't it be both yeah Yeah, i think it is sport sport entertaining which is which is which one more though you know Obviously, obviously sport it's, is it's a weird definition because, because, like, anything is both entertaining and, a, like... Any sport is entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, I if, guess. if not, nobody would watch it. Right. Yeah, going back... Have a the, the athleticism or, like, the... Going back, like, whatever, a thousand years to... What, hundreds of years to the start of the Olympics and all yeah. that. That was the sport for entertainment. The Colosseum was built mm-hmm. for... I mean, that was Rome, but... Yeah, but well, sport for entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, even in the ancient times, as long as civilization oh, has been around. as long as there was someone to yeah. pay yeah. someone to do <laughs> something else. Or, no, or, <laughs> you know not, what I mean? Not, not even with money involved, man. Yeah. Just like, I'm sure it's that like, at one point... I'll fucking, watch you guys fight. <laughs> or, or, or cavemen, yeah, cavemen went around and yeah. either fought each other or like tried Fighting. to be like, yo, I bet I can get there faster than you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I man, could, yeah. I, I, I bet think, you I could lift that rock. I think like that competitiveness is like innate. Into humans, yeah. Into yeah. humans. Yeah. yeah. And, and more, more so guys than girls. Yeah. I don't think girls are nearly as competitive. In my subjective uh, experience of both it, women no, and there's women. Some, there's some tough girls out there, man. But I believe it. it but I, but I it, believe it, there are more it, guys. It's, it's, not, it's not necessarily like maybe in the same line of sports. You know what right. I mean? Like there, there's like some chicks that are like tough into tennis. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, no. Have you I'm seen those Williams, the Venus and Serena? Yeah, they, they're Jesus, definitely. Jesus, man. They're deep into their sports. <laughs> they're like they're from another planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're basically. They're, they're, they're the they're, final boss. They're basically <laughs> men. But. <laughs> the, 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 uh, yeah. We just lost our female audiences. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, yeah. I think any sensible female would agree that this is the. The Venus sisters. The, I mean, the Williams sisters, Venus and Serena. Yeah. 
<laughs> you heard me the first time. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's a it's an interesting question though. Which is it more? To me, it's it's sport, which is entertaining. But it's sport. They uh, look at Monaco. It, it is Fresh. honestly. Oh, I, I think the argument is like moot, right? There's no real answer. You'll you'll never. You'll only get a subjective point of view yeah. from, from yeah. something like that, right? But well, they're looking they're looking for the majority though. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. No. I, Hopefully, in, it's sport, so they don't uh, like. It's different. I think more from, from sport or... from sport to sport. Like for instance, like the, let's. What's the majority of F one fans who actually do that sport? Like how many of them go go karting? How many of them race in that sort of regard? Yeah, versus that, 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 that's an interesting thing to to ask, yeah. Uh, versus Th- like days, soccer or hockey, we're yeah. like, I'll go on every weekend. Those are so buddies. soccer is the most accessible sport. It's basically, super accessible, there is. yeah. And I think something that does hurt Formula One is that the, the inaccessibility, inaccessibility to not to uh, witness it, but to actually participate in its. Uh, that's why it's in up its, there in though. its that's, art form, right? That, that's why it's up there, right. all, all racing. Because oh, like, totally, wow, these rightfully guys are, so. Like, look what they're doing; they're going so fast, so fa- like I would, they, I would they, never they, do that. There is also the ar- the argument to be said that you know what, but that is also a double edged sword because then so many people just find it uh, could potentially find it so much harder to relate to, I guess. Right. No. Yeah. yeah no. Totally. That's that's a fair argument, but it's also saying like. Um, Oh, I just fucking lost that train of thought. Brain fart. It's gone. It's, <laughs> it's gone. gone. It's gone forever. It's gone forever. I don't even know. Yeah, I think I, I. I think I. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna agree with whatever got unsaid. <laughs> whatever was left unsaid, I will agree with. There it. are just so many variables to, yeah. to whether uh, or not um, a sport is going to be uh, accepted by a populace for how long or for whatever its term is. Yeah. Like I. I sorry. One second, Danny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it. I always love asking the questions like, hey, uh, you know, like what happens when like anti gravity gets sort of discovered? And does F1 adopt that? Does it not? It does it choose? It, oh, F- I'd love it to, but then that's F0. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Oh my God. Is that how they came up with it? Now? I'm pretty sure <laughs> someone just did a bunch of acid and was just like, yo, I figured out future F1. F-0. I'm gonna make a game. I'm gonna make a game out of it. <laughs> and it's not gonna be F1. It's gonna be F zero. F zero. That's brilliant. Jokes. Yeah, I don't know. Sport. It's it, it's a sport. It is a sport. It's it's one of like, in a way, even though it's 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 so technical and so depending on the machines, it is one of the one one of like the purest forms of sport. It's in in, in the sense that. Um, on race day, at least. Yeah, or at least on race but day. The rest is like the engineers are competing in the sport as well. Yeah, they're all competing. They know the engineers know who each other are on the other teams. A lot of them probably went to school together. True, I mean, maybe not a lot, but I'm sure or, some of them know each other. Well, they, they've been work, working in like the the junior teams and whatnot. For yeah, a long especially time. some of the senior guys. Yeah, been switched around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exa- working in the lower classes, GP two, F three, and etc. Yeah, that's how. That's how quick Christian Horner. Indeed. I think he. He was a team principal of like one of the lower categories. Hey, while we're talking about lower categories, yeah, remember how I've been um, following uh, the the careers of European Formula Three drivers? Um, our homeboy Lance Stroll, Lance, how's and, Lance doing? And Tatiana Calderon, your home girl. Yeah, my home girl. She's pretty good. <laughs> um. Tatiana yeah, has had Columbia thing. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Tatiana hadn't been doing that great uh, so far. Um, the championship like, when actually when we last talked to her, it was gonna go into Hockenheim, mm-hmm. um, and so it started in Silverstone. They, she said some bad luck. They, yeah, they did three races in Silverstone, three races in um, in Hockenheim, mm-hmm. and yeah, she's just had some bad luck, right? And and but you know whatever. Uh, some people say that like it was, you know, m- maybe she's just being, maybe she just needs to push herself harder to be in the higher position. Anyway, th- this weekend <clears throat> again, <clears throat> I don't know if you remember from our interview with her mm-hmm. that um, she said that one of the races that she looks forward to the most, other than Spa, is a race that Formula One doesn't race to, it doesn't race in anymore. It's the Po, mm-hmm. the Po Grand Prix. And I said, oh yeah, Po, Po. The thing about Po is that Po is the very first. Uh, race that was ever called a Grand Prix. Oh, right. So, it, it, yeah, it was the very first Grand Prix. Uh, 
that an event was called that happened in Poe. So Poe po has a lot of history. And in many ways, when I was watching um, the, the, the Poe races, and again, like I, like I said, they're, uh, European Formula 3, they have a YouTube channel. They post all their stuff there. Um, yeah, give, give them a follow. I had yeah. a lot, a lot of fun watching. And even though the, the races are like half an hour each right. or so, yeah. maybe up to 45 minutes if they're safety cars, um, it, or no, I think they, it can only go for half an hour, 35 minutes. Anyway, um, it was a lot of fun. And that track looks amazing, man. <clears throat> it's a bunch of roads. It's a bunch of city roads, kind of like, uh, kind of like Monaco. It's tiny. And that's probably why, uh, one of the reasons why, um, F1 like, doesn't go yeah, or, or even like this is the top cat, top top categories. I think the highest the uh, category that uh, participates there is F3. Um, but yeah, there, there's a there's a, a definite reason for that. It's, it's too small, but the elevation changes, man. You saw like they were ridiculous, like, or it, just going up and down, up and down, and it just it, it looked tight like Monaco. Yeah. Um. And and I have heard that from back in the old times, like people did say like yo Poe Poe is is really good, and, I, and now I know why, and I'm glad I I, I watched it. It was it, it was a good time, but again, um. Her performance was like in the twenties, nineteen twenties, uh, th- that she qualified, um, and then for the third race, she actually got taken out in a accident that was described as you could describe as a pretty bad ac- bad, bad accident. Yeah, it's pretty and serious. I, and I think I I got. She almost uh, got her head I, run over. I sent you the link on the other tab, I believe. I think in the other tab. Yeah, the other window there. Uh, so ninth race. There you go. That, yeah. Oh, second oh, last oh, one. Yeah, second last one there. Yeah. yeah. So this is before the crash, and now, so <laughs> look at this again. This circuit is awesome. Now, uh, yeah, just 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 watch this. Safety car has been deployed. Yeah. We've had a look oh, at that's yeah, that's the Tiana right there oh, under that car. Oh, yeah. Car was riding right up over the back. That dude went right up over. Her, now over yeah. her head, over now, the, right over is, the yeah. roll hoop. Just just oh, wait till because they're gonna show it from the, coming from the front. Just wait. Um, and this accident was clearly it was caused by some kid that was coming all the way at the front, and it just like boom, 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 escalated all the way to the back. You'll see it. But yeah, the, the, the track looks like drivers yeah, yeah, yeah the, this this view. So this one of these guys like lost control. Oh yeah, and then over here, Tatiana is gonna appear over to your left. Now, oh my just, God, she just got through. So yeah, that's her front wing off, and there's her just her race over. But look how close that went to her head. Yeah, right, right, right. Oh close to your head. God, the car the car drove over the roll hoop. The tire was basically on top of it. Yeah, the dude behind her break too late and went right, right, right over them. But (laughs) so that's an accident, and and she's been in like like not not similar accidents in 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 the way that that was like in in the gravity of him, but um she's been. Oh, can you uh, knock over that? uh, Is it this way? This way? Yeah, hold on. This way. Uh, Yeah. I saw an article about her. She said it looked a lot worse than it felt, but (laughs) anyway. Um, no, she, she, yeah, she's, she, she's apparently good. And like, you could see her like smiling and like doing a thumbs up to the camera, but it's just, it just keeps happening to her mm. that she gets knocked out on the first, um, corner or so, or like during the first yeah. lap happened a few by times like this season that, yeah, she's she, not finished because <laughs> bad luck too bad. But honestly, I mean, uh, th- you could also make the argument that we cursed then, her. <laughs> then she has no, to be. Qu- she has to be quicker. She has to like qualify higher. Because if right. she, if she was at the top uh, during qualifying, then one could say that maybe she wouldn't have been involved in a, in a crash like this right. because she'd be surrounded by more expert drivers. It's just to be perfectly honest. It always looks like such a clusterfuck when a race starts. There's always yeah. so many people just like having to get in front of someone else, and they'll just do it regardless. Yeah, you know, obviously the guys in the the, the higher qualifying positions, mm-hmm. like they have more of like a skill in that sort of way. Where like more in the back, in, in the starts, yeah, totally in the back yeah. end, it's just like this weird barrel of fish <laughs> just trying to fucking <laughs> worm their way in. Yeah, yeah. and that and that is, and and that would probably be the way if if, if Formula One ever returns to having like so many cars. Yeah, it would probably be such a cluster fuck in the first turn. But whatever, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have it be. Let's throw in this other. Uh, Oh, that Ed, Ed Carpenter, the American, it's the Indianapolis uh, 500 
another race in the triple crown of motorsport. Is that still going on? The, the people are still going to watch this. All right, Check we're going to get a slow-mo here. Let's watch what happens here. There's two. He loses coming into two. That kid oh. gets away. Oh, my God. Slaps Ooh. that sa safer barrier. Flame. And then he hangs on for a wild ride here. Oh, oh. God. Holy shit. That's probably the best angle we've had so far. Is it? The second day of qualifying for the Indi Indianapolis Carpenter 500. Two. Again, we're glad he's okay. That's the most important thing. Yeah, so Hold he, he was in hospital in a uh, serious life-threatening condition. I think a, a piece of his, I think it was part of the suspension, came through the... The cockpit, th yeah. through the monocoque, and yeah. went through his leg. Like, oh my god! I believe tore his thigh open. Like his leg is completely ripped open. Not good. Oh fuck! His uh, his uh, his sensor in the car registered on his body a hundred and twenty-five. Jeez! G. What? Yeah. The what? crash was at a 120 registered 125 G. That's too many G's, man. How many, how many did Alonso yeah. take when too he was... Too many G's burgers. 50, 50 something. 50, yeah, he was about 50. Mm -hmm. That crash Alonso had practiced before the season, right? Yeah. He was helicoptered yeah. to the hospital. They kept him unconscious for, for like two... Or whatever. He's in there for two or three days. More than twice. It's crazy. But anyways, he's... Uh, I read today... That happened two or three days ago, a couple days ago. I read today that he's... Uh, He's gonna be okay. He's doing fine. Oh, okay, that's yeah, he's, great. He's recovered. I guess, obviously, the best doctor is what and whatnot. That dude will be okay. But his leg, like that one, like Tatiana said, that uh, wasn't as bad as it looked. I think his was possibly <laughs> exactly. as even even worse as <laughs> than it looked. It looked pretty bad. It looked really bad. Guys, I forgot to say something about about the practice sessions today. Mm. So you know how during uh, basically like the last hour of FP two, they didn't get any action. Yeah. Um, the rain and yeah because of the rain and it wouldn't have been significant so the FIA has actually conceded and they they have uh, they will let them carry over one of their uh, set of the brand new tires that was supposed to be used for FP2 or FP1 and FP2 oh, to FP3 man. so FP3 is gonna be wild it's gonna be insane yeah holy shit so, and that that's happens and FP3 that's, that's a, so there's nothing going on uh, Friday yeah uh, but normally it would be Friday FP1, FP2, Monaco, Thursday FP1, FP2, and then Saturday, Saturday um, FP3, the free practice three, and then like an hour later, the, ra uh, the, the qualifying. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, FP3, and it, FP3 only runs for an hour as opposed to the hour and a half. So they're going to have to try and get as much of the, the race set up as well as the qualifying set up testing for all of that during a very short hour that's going to feel even shorter because yeah, everybody's going to want to be out, out on track. Yeah, one hour. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's going to be out on track with extra tires, too. Exactly. To go crazy. Yeah. One. Oh, man, this is going to be cra It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's, it's going to yeah. be crazy. I'm sure that FP3 is going to be, like, a good one to watch. I think I might still go back and watch P1. If I Do it. It's, it's, it, was a, it was a good qualifying session. Lots lots and lots to happen. I, I, I didn't even practice. touch on the surface of, of all that happened in FP1. Crazy. I'm mm. going to check that out. Speaking of tires... The tender for the 2017 contract has got has opened up today, I, I believe. Oh yeah. So yeah, Pirelli, as you know, Pirelli is making the tires right now mm -hmm. for Formula One, and the contract ends after next year. And uh, so there's an open tender for um, any company that wants to submit. Yeah. The, so this this is Michelin. About a week ago, Michelin expressed some interest in returning to Formula One. But I believe they said only if they could bring in an 18-inch tire, an 18-inch rim. So this is an example of one. That's a Michelin 18-inch racing tire. Jeez. I'm not sure exactly why they want. They they also they just don't want to fuck around. Yeah, exactly. And they <laughs> they also don't want. Uh, I, I think one one of the bigger points that I heard at least today is that Michelin they want more durable tires. Exactly. They want they want yeah. tires that will be designed to race with full lo, full distances. Which I don't understand. I think they just think that it reflects on their brand. Like Pirelli mm. was asked when they were signed as contra as the current supplier to make tires that wear out quick mm -hmm. to bring tire strategy in. The tires are only supposed to last a third to a half of the race at most. I think Michelin just probably is self-conscious and thinks that that's going to give some sort of uh, impression to people that 
their tires their are tires shit. are shit and like don't buy Pirellis because they only last you like three days because they fall apart as soon as you put them on your car <laughs> 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 yeah exactly well at, 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 the, at the beginning at the beginning of when Pirelli introduced these uh, the, these tires that would fade off I think that was what 2013 maybe or 2012 um yeah, I think 12. yeah whenever it is that they first introduce it people were making jokes like that like yeah. oh you know, oh your girlfriend got pregnant like what brand were your condoms pirelli <laughs> <laughs> that's good yeah that's good uh because they just <laughs> they, they break after the first lap <laughs> yeah uh, exactly um but now like if, 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 and actually something interesting that i heard on the Team principals press conference today. It was, a, it was that was a heated one, especially after like the strategy group meeting. It was a good one. If it, it's on, it's on YouTube there. Like if you haven't watched it yet, yeah, I gotta check that. Yeah, out. yeah, you should watch it. the team principals press conference this time around. It was good. So it, they had a few team principals and Cyril Abitabu, uh from Reno. He was like, and then and 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 Christian Horner was He's there. He's been too. there more than once. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also. Principal. Um, this guy I forgot his name uh, Paul Hembry from Pirelli he was there they didn't ask him much until the very, the very end and he said look listen we we have a commitment to Formula One we we like the like our relationship so far um, but like on, on like on the business side of it we have to make sure that the, the long term goals of, of Formula One and whenever like the next contract is that it's gonna be like favorable in the areas that we're looking to expand. Mm. So he said, uh, Pirelli, um, as, a, as a sponsor, as well as the tire supplier, because they, 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 and they have to be, they have to be a sponsor to a way, because you, you know how like so in some tracks, like most of the advertising that you see, some tracks that advertise, is all Pirelli, Pirelli. right? That's yeah. why Bernie Ecclestone wants them to stay, please stay, <laughs> keep paying us yeah. 40 million a year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but as a sponsor and tire supplier, uh, Pirelli said, or Paul Henry said that it is, we, we got to make sure that our objectives align. Mm. And and if you're not going to be looking to looking to, uh, for certain markets, and he said specifically, um, he said uh, North America, Latin America, Asia, and somewhere else, I forget. China, maybe. Oh, yeah, obviously China. Everywhere, ch other, ch everywhere aside from Europe. Europe and yeah. <laughs> yeah so so and and he, he they obviously like didn't seem to thrill well he, he didn't mention the middle east so antarctica yeah <laughs> bring out some snow monster tires. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i mean like so so so, so that's and i think that was very telling as to what um what pirelli's stance is here's another one so and, and be, be, what be, this tender if you're a potential tire manufacturer out there Thinking about making some tires, you have till June seventeenth to submit your proposals. But uh, the FI, so there's been some testing of Pirelli eighteen-inch tires on Formula One cars in the recent past. Mm -hmm. So f I don't know from and Formula E runs on them. We have GP GP two runs on eighteen-inch tires. Mm -hmm. Formula E runs on some skinny ones. They're like bike tires, but they're 18 <laughs> yeah. they are eighteen inches. Um, the FIA uh, in the tender package i guess here's a quote while the wheel diameter is currently set at 13 inches this should not preclude an increase preclude sorry an increase in diameter if the tire manufacturer feels that there may be advantages to the competitors by doing so with details to be supplied and okay, so now say that in, in roman catholic so right now the tires <laughs> are 13 inches and uh this, that doesn't mean to them that they have to stay 13 inches. But if any of these proposals are for tires more than 18 inches, then they they basically want some details why that there would be advantage to the competitors, the racers, right, to increase the size. Well, I guess I, I just wasn't clear on, on on the competitors. Now, now I know it's not it's, well, not, not, it's not the competitors. I'm not clear it's not the competitors of Pirelli. From, it's the competitors like the, the racers. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I was just reading a quote in Legalese from this. Uh, <laughs> Tire tender. So this is going to run from 2017 to 19, only three years. But I'm pretty sure... Wait, let me, let me get the last sip out of there. I'm pretty sure unless um, unless they're going to do something where they're going to... And it seem I don't know. I've heard Alonso especially say twice in two different interviews that there should be 
competition brought back in the tires because they'll push each other. Michelin and Pirelli would push each other to develop better and better tires. Unless well, it's it going to be it both, did, it's going to be Pirelli's going to win it, the tender. It did. For sure. He, he did reach those days, right? He was around for the, the Michelin versus uh, Bridgestone days. Bridgestone days. days. He was, yeah, and he said got, at the end of that, they actually... They end, materials to make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, this is an all-night shop. Actually, I'm starting to run out of lime, so this might be the last round or two. <laughs> um, sorry, straw noises. But <laughs> yeah, so unless uh, unless they they are gonna compete, then Pirelli is gonna be the only one because of next year, which uh, Tobias Gruner <laughs> showed us. Oh my God! Yeah, to Toby had a so great quote. I'm gonna try to use the computer. Yo, for a second. <laughs> be the producer, Danny. F channel your inner producer. Here we go. Is it showing on the screen? No. Uh, it, it's one of the scenes. I think you have to click. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Okay. You, you, do you wanna do you wanna like talk about this? I am very. Uh, this is one thing that actually has me very excited. Uh, the whole Pirelli. Per okay. Tobias Gruner tweeted this afternoon. Pirelli will develop six dry compounds to choose from, but some of them not available at certain tracks. Nice. So did, like, did they announce this in the press conference that you were just talking about? No. The, okay. No. The, but but so I'm not sure where this news came from. But Thank, Paul, Paul Hembry, bias, though. Yeah, Paul Hembry did um, did touch on the subject, and and he he did he did, he, he he somehow he made a reference to it. He, he said that um, he had they had been working together with the FI or with with the um, FIA and, and you know and whoever was concerned the the, the strategy group into finding a solution that wouldn't be too like too bad on them like it wouldn't because remember i was saying it's going to be a, a, a nightmare in terms of logistics to have to produce all six compounds for all of the races and bring enough for everybody to to pick and choose yeah, yeah it's a logistical nightmare this so the, the, the i guess the agreement that they've that they've the, that they've reached with Pirelli is that obviously Pirelli is going to have to do a lot and, and Paul Henry said that again they're going to be working harder than before like this is going to like require a lot more from them but it's not like at a breaking point when it's too much right yeah so this uh this dude Nate at work we were talking about this at lunch today and yeah like <laughs> I told him you and me figured this out before you need like four five six hundred tires for a race weekend yeah yeah the way it is now and they when they announce weeks ahead or sorry races ahead uh for the next races these are the tires that are coming up and they're they're handmade these are handmade tires pretty bespoke much. handmade tires only for f1 so what i'm what i'm thinking uh is that i believe i would bet that the probably at the start of the season is going to be okay the first three races china australia and uh, whatever Bahrain, whatever it ends up being next year, you got to choose now before the season starts. You got to choose your tires before we do any, before we go anywhere. Yeah, before true. the season starts. And <laughs> the way that they choose them now, they tell these guys three, four, five races ahead. These are the tires that are coming up, and then they make them and deliver them. Because, like you said, how can they make six different kinds for all of them? Yeah, for all of them. And then they're gonna change again. They're gonna change all the colors again. <laughs> are they actually? I don't know. What are they gonna do? Oh, true. Yeah, they have. They, they, yeah, they have more. So they're gonna have to get to at least bring in two more colors. There's another question too. Is that will the teams? Okay, say you and I are on different teams, and I choose out of the six, I choose the two softest ones. Okay, and you choose the two hardest ones, right? Uh, my softer and my harder. Are they gonna be marked? Say like white and black, and your softer and your harder be marked say white and black no nothing except that's, no, no just to keep to keep it secret amongst teams like oh no, i, I think, wonder mercedes i think that's spilling shit over there no no, no nothing's built it was mercedes gonna be like oh did ferrari choose the hard tires or the soft tires or is everybody gonna know that they picked compound four and two and then the other team picked number three and compound four i think i think the compounds are gonna have their specific colors but the only like secrecy that that we're gonna have to, or that the, that the teams are gonna have to put up with is maybe like, up until the cars Weeks are ahead running until them. they get there that weekend. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, and until they get like out of the tire the blanket. Producers return. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's. You're a great stand-in. 
<laughs> I did it this time. I didn't, I didn't fuck anything up. Last <laughs> yet. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm back in my own chair now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say that it probably would. But again, would it be a secret up until the race? Or people are gonna want to know. Oh yeah. We're gonna want to know. I want to yeah. know. I, I want to know. know now. I don't yeah, know. I don't know what you're talking about, but I, I want to know. What are they gonna call? Read this. Read this tweet. Pirelli will develop six dry compounds to choose from, but some of them not available at certain tracks. So that's, what are they going to call them more than they have be, now? Oh, interesting. But so, but are they going to go like right now? They only have hard? they only have available for the for tracks. They only have two compounds available. So they're they're talking about two more compounds, but also two more compounds available per race for the teams to choose oh. two out of. The strategy. Yeah, they're going to choose mm. from six instead of having chosen for them from four. They're going to be like an ultra hard, hard. And then what? Hard, hey, hard me, medium, me, medium yeah, rare. Yeah, yeah, medium rare. <laughs> it's like a steak. <laughs> bust them out like steaks. Yeah. <laughs> and then what? Soft, Here's super soft. Here's off the grill. <laughs> soft, super soft, ultra soft, or what? They're going to come up with Rid three, for her three pleasure. <laughs> This one, yeah. this one is really limey. Uh, who would you, would you like this one? Oh no, I, that's mine. Okay, oh, that, <laughs> nice. This, this one is his. Yeah, okay. Thank the next you. one is mine, I suppose. <laughs> These are great, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem, problem, yeah. yeah. Sorry again. Sorry, Guillermo. Sorry, Cuba. <laughs> oh, Cuba, Cuba invented it. I think Guillermo was just a shit bartender. <laughs> Guillermo, oh, my yeah. God, <laughs> Guillermo. Um. Okay, we talked about the fan survey. We talked about the tires. We talked about... Um, oh, yeah. Monaco 2014. Uh, uh, uh. So I last, like we, we talked about it so much already. I know, but I want to go but back. there's more. There's I more. I want to go back to what happened last it's year. It's a juicy steak you just want to dive <laughs> right back into. Just sucker. Sucker right up. No. I am... <laughs> You choose, you choose steak. Last year was a hilarious, hilarious Monaco Grand Prix because of what Danny described that that whole Rosberg controversy. Uh, I, I I shouldn't say hilarious. Hilarious is not the the right word, but it was a good. It was a good Monaco Grand Prix. Here, let me find my notes. So, um, <laughs> with uh, let me let me refresh your memory, Danny, as to what happened last year. A Monaco in and around the track. That 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 other people aren't talking about because people everybody's talking about the the the, the Rosberg crash. This was when uh, the Biebs are the Biebs, Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber. Yeah, Justin Bieber showed up to Monaco and he he demanded he demanded to be introduced and to talk to to Fernando Alonso. <laughs> you remember that? And Alonso was like, no. "Sorry, not interested." Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> he's just like, he's just like, who? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously, Rosberg revealed his true cheating face. Um, there was a safety car, uh, courtesy of Sutil or Perez, I forgot. But anyway, I remember like they just like went and totaled their car. Um, this is this is also when we got that awesome soundbite, courtesy of Sebastian Vettel. Uh, I got no power. I got no power. <laughs> <laughs> and that pretty much summarizes the remainder of his season in 2014. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. His, his his Renault engine was shed, and he had no power. Um, <laughs> um, what else? Oh, this was also. Um, I, I, Later in the race, once it was uh, very clear that Nico Rosberg was one, was gonna win, that was when when Hamilton had something in his eye that wouldn't let him see, <laughs> <laughs> and he was very clearly just crying. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, because they asked him, he, he said it over over radio. He's like, I can't see, I can't see, I can't see out of my right eye. I, I got something in my eye, but these are visors. You, nothing flies through them. It's not like he just got a bee in his eye. It's no possible, yeah. right? Um, Could have been a lash or an eyebrow, but you know. no. And, and, and what if what if he was a, some he, eye, he, eye? No, no, gunk. he looked like he was crying, like. I, but it, you know, like that angry, like rage cry. Oh, rage cry. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm familiar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, so 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 yeah, th those are just some uh, so, some tidbits that happened last year. Also, last year in Monaco was when we saw uh, Jules Bianchi pull up that fantastic performance and get those um, two points that basically saved Marussia this year. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that, and Jules Bianchi uh, in Monaco. So, and, and, and that, that also goes to show Jules Bianchi was a kid that you haven't heard about much this year mm-hmm. because he's not a racer anymore. He got a, he got a pretty, in a pretty serious car crash in uh, Suzuka last year in, Jap- in the Japanese Grand Prix Uh-oh. and has since been in a coma. But he was, he was definitely like, like some, still, still in a coma? Yeah, still in a coma since then. Yeah. Um, Holy moly. <clears throat> but it's been like, Commentators were months, commentators were singing his praises. They were saying this kid is the the real deal. He's he's the next big thing, and then in Monaco he proved it. He 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 reached for in a, in a very uncompetitive Marussia. He reached all the way up to what ninth place? Yeah, ninth place, scoring two points. Yeah, that even though it, it sounds like shit, like oh ninth yeah. place. No, it was it was a it was a, a huge achievement on his part, and he he pulled off some great moves. Remember like going down, and he this was when he like. Uh, bumped that caterham out of the way i forgot i think it was kobayashi's caterham so it was like he just like they were going down uh at the really tight corner i i forgot at which one it was but he basically like he like he like bumped wheels and like moved kobayashi out of the way it was awesome um i'm, I'm, I'm trying to yeah I can't mike can, can you it. can you show it uh I, I, I'll, I'll tell you which one it is but can you show it but not not on this <laughs> not on the screen no audio yeah yeah let's just see it here it's, oh. it's a very quick. Oh, you got the clip. Yeah, I got the clip. Which see? one is he? That boom, boom, oh, get out wow. of the way. Oh, Remember that? that? Remember <laughs> that? That was Jules, that's Jules Bianchi. Bianchi right there. Okay, go back, go back. Just see this again, man. Oh my god. He's like, like boom, nope. double tap that, him down around <laughs> Rascas. Yeah, that's Rascas. Yeah, yeah, that's where it was. Yeah, so <laughs> wow. moves like that gave him. And I don't, he, he, I don't remember that move, but yeah, wow. Yeah, he, they gave him the reputation, he had, and then he went. And well, obviously, I don't think he has. Even if he ever gets better, I don't think it's gonna be uh, his time to return to Formula One in the way that it is. But no. too bad we could have had a, a hero among yeah. us. Um, but but too sad it never happened. Anyway, oh, we got Hamilton instead. <laughs> the hundred million he's pound man. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, that's sorry. That's that's what I wanted to bring up about Monaco 2014. Don't forget that last year there was action, despite all the Rosberg talk. There was action back up, uh, up and down, and and hopefully it just talk seems like was, such an exciting race. This yeah, brings so. me to that uh, Rosberg talk was action though, just <laughs> the terrible kind. Yeah, <laughs> I want I want to I want to put I want to you know from from up and down the web. Um, let let. Let me tell you, like, what people are wondering about, uh, you know, the talking points that are gonna, that, that are going to be for this upcoming Monaco Grand Prix. Number one, can Hamilton break Nico Rosberg's Monaco streak? Uh, How many times has he won Monaco? He's won. He's won the last two times, and he started from pole also. So not not only one, but he pole and win the last two mm. times, and then the the year previous to that, he started second and he finished second. So he's got a pretty good. A pretty, a pretty good run, in Monaco. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gonna do it. We for all the reasons we talked about. He moved there. He's determined. Rosberg's an asshole. <laughs> he secretly hates him. Hamilton secretly hates Rosberg. I'm sure of that. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna happen. I Ros- think Rosberg's not gonna win. He's I, got, and he's got the pressure and the weight of the guilt of his bullshit last, last year, year yeah. on his shoulders. Even if he doesn't want to admit it or whatever, even if he only did that in the last minute, whatever. Yeah, so I, I, I want an underdog to win, but I I, I always cheer for the end. Of, well, for the most part, I hope I hope some something happens and that little uh, blur there that you showed us on the map changes and it becomes a full on storm. Because if we <laughs> if we have like even just qualifying uh, in the rain or a little yeah, bit of qualifying, a little bit, something, or a, something, a little bit, a few of, laps, shake yeah. it up, shake it up, yeah, just shake it up. One one session of qualifying, <laughs> come on, that practice session even that would screw up the race completely. They'd have no data True. to go by. Whatever. No, the, the FP some... FP three. Oh my god, if it rained FP three, yeah, the rain dance, come on. <laughs> yeah, I we mean, we it's not unheard of. We need we need a shaman to go down to Monaco <laughs> and do a little rain dance. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was I I don't know was that racist we're not allowed to be racist on this show guys that's not racist according, according no. to YouTube was that not racist good what if we fucking no. just get someone with a crystal ball and just be like Ugh. well you know? we should do it we should invest in that okay <laughs> Wait, where's where's the obelisk where's the triangle 
Oh, I left that at home. The pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> the, the metaphysical pyramid. <laughs> um, <A> wisdom pyramid. <laughs> um, what, 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 what else do we got? What else do we got? I don't know. I think, I think we... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Another one. Uh, can Toro Rosso continue to impress? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen. I didn't see any practice. I I don't know. For me, I can't. You have to answer that yourself. I think. Answer it. I think. I think. I, I, think seen, I think they will. If they don't catch on fire, they use like seven engines each already. They they've had, but they've had better performance than than the Red Bull works team. Yeah. The red the, the, the main Red Bull team. Yeah. Um, they I didn't think, actually use seven engines. Yeah, I think those those two kids, um, Verstappen and and uh, and uh, Chili Signs. They both look good, I think. Especially for Stappen, though. Yeah, but but Chili signs too. He's no, he's no, he's not gonna be like an easy like second play. Like you know, like a, he, he's not a second driver like as as much. He's he's right behind there. What do you uh, what do you think about uh, how Alonso will do? Well, that, that 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 was that was the next question. Will um don't need a crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it for you. Yeah, is is McLaren gonna right. gonna finally be able to to score those elusive points? How how is Alonso? No. How's fair That's enough? That's it. <laughs> how, how does Alonso do generally on Monaco? Okay. He, um, Alonso has won Monaco. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, yeah, he has been a winner in Monaco, and he also um, is, you know, I, as you should know, by a large one of the best drivers in Formula One history. <laughs> 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 um, but no, he's he's. He's handy around Monaco. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he did. He didn't show it That's perhaps in his Ferrari days, uh, in, in the later half when he was like battling Sebast Sebastian Vettel. Mm -hmm. um, those years so much because Vettel was there, obviously. Yeah, but he's still like he still does some did some pretty good performances. I think he's um, one of the most recent people that have won the race from not pole position you know like the right. monaco is usually like it's, or, it's very processional oh, yeah okay. it's like a yeah. line you just, like, <laughs> it's yeah it's like a conga line you just follow each other through <laughs> a lot of the time I that, yeah i always imagine that like a, a smaller circuit yeah. uh width wise at least is it's harder to pass somewhere right yeah and, and some say the monaco like in that in that case in that Short sense straight. is it's is more like a race against yourself like mm. like to just to just make it just, find your, find yeah. your spirit animal. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Make it and try to not to crash into the barriers. Try to not fuck it if anything up. Right. And if you're lucky, you'll end up where you started. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, the qual yeah, really the qualifying is most of the race. Mm -hmm. yeah, but there's still there's still gonna be action in the race. I I, I guarantee you that, especially mm -hmm. like this year and with with all with all the, the stars that are aligning for what, this Sunday. What uh, time is it on for us? Uh, it would be so it's tw S I don't know some okay so yeah, tw tw twelve like eight, eight it's like twelve thirty in Britain so what's that subtract five hours from there yeah something like mm. seven eight a.m. seven thirty eight thirty yeah mm. yeah somewhere in there seven to eight a.m. yeah yeah, yeah. most it's of the times, most man, of the European times. races are somewhere in there seven eight nine a.m. yeah. Don't worry, then the next race after that will be at a very convenient time oh, and, and, yeah. and location for us. Oh man. <laughs> right in front of our that's eyes. So, that's so exciting. Yeah. Oh no, it's gonna be it's gonna be a great one. Um looking forward to Monaco for sure. Um what else did I have here in the questions? Um is anybody going to have a miracle drive like Bianchi's last year? A miracle drive? Yeah. Uh <laughs> I doubt it. You guys haven't talked about uh, Vettel. The well, Vettel. Well, Vettel is just going to be in Ferrari trying to do his best to stay up on top of the Mercedes. Yeah. But but I, do, you, do, you, do you think he's going to be in that same position, like a three, uh, four, two, I th maybe? I think that Vettel, yeah. yeah. I think he'll probably... I, I would predict third place for him. Yeah, but what, one thing third. one thing that the commentaries were saying... Uh, Especially with those crazy brakes. Come on. That's true. Yeah, the new crazy brakes. They got brakes. holes and extra ducts <laughs> and shit. Oval <laughs> holes, bigger ducts. Yeah. Um, but one thing that somebody did say is that during during the Spanish Grand Prix last year, uh, la, uh, a couple weeks ago, last Grand Prix, right? Um, they were what forty seconds or more than or forty five seconds off the pace, but that was because it was just Rosberg up there coasting. Some people figure that if if it had been like a situation where they were like the the Mercedes at the top were actually gunning it. Mm. It would have been a completely different story, and, and there would be even a minute ahead of the Ferrari. So, 
who knows what the Ferrari real pace is. And they've said <clears throat> that they're not going to turn the engine up or that they're not going to you know, use any tokens or whatever. They're, they're uh, Not for this race. Mm -hmm. They're going to show up with a new engine for, for Montreal, obviously. So uh, more and more, just the way that I see it, uh, and people seem to think that Ferrari's like next chance for a win is going to be the Canadian Grand Prix, not Monaco. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're just too. They're, they're not going to get a win in Monaco. Yeah, no way. They might be there as like best of the rest, but yeah, I predict that's out third. It just reminded me I had something to say about him last week, and I forgot this week too, and it's too late now. Oh, you <laughs> so will talk next week. You know, you know what? What we need to actually like make sure we do. What? Fantasy. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I didn't pick my... Um, I'm doing my picks right now. Yeah, don't do your picks right now. Yo, five lights, guys. You have to skip two race predictions. Come on. <laughs> <sighs> it's, it's, not the, it's not their fault that we get drunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but Sorry, guys. <laughs> you know. It's, uh, it's, a sport. It's, it's mostly... Well, it's, it's a sporting thing that. to do. <laughs> Wait, I don't is, know. Is the I'm making for predictions Badger? for myself. Yeah, yeah, for Badger. Oh man, I'm not doing good. I never was, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh... man, oh man, Fantasy F1. Follow us, BadgerGP.com. Uh, Fantasy F1. F1.udt.co.za. <laughs> for the simplest of all okay why don't, why don't you just say go to our website click on the reach us section and all our information is there yeah all our, all our information is there join our team league flat out fever compete yeah. with us yeah all, all the team uh, codes all the information that you need is on the on the web on our website flat fever.com click the reach us tab and all the way down the bottom we have our fantasy uh, f1 information um danny are you still ahead in in, in most of our stuff I'm checking right now um, on Badger, which is the most important. I'm ranked 1591 out of 9051, I think I said. And uh, I'm still go. in second place, I'm, but I'm 40 points behind uh, Big Bad Benji F1 team. Ben Herrick, one of the flat out guys, is beating me now. Oh, sorry, one of, the five, one of the five lightsers. Yeah. And uh, the other guy is right behind me, eight points behind. Uh oh! And you two uh -oh. guys are somewhere down at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> you shut the fuck up, Danny. Yeah, yeah, Danny. Ninth, show you guys up. are ninth, and eighth, and ninth. Oh, nice. Mike is eighty-five points ahead of you, <laughs> but I'm I'm like I'm two hundred sixty ahead of you, Jason. Oh, so. fuck. <laughs> Don't worry about this season. Yeah, and, uh, it's already over. I, I can't expect to win. Really, I'm only I'm only forty points behind Ben. So look out. I, I missed two predictions. <laughs> Pull your socks up. <laughs> um, uh, or do, don't. Do, do we have any any? Oh, any other passing thoughts? Uh, no. I have to go to the washroom. So let's wrap this up. Let's do it. Uh, exciting weekend ahead. We will um, put one of these after the Monaco Grand Prix with big news. Next Grand Prix after Monaco. Let's remind everybody again: is the Canadian Grand Prix. There's still tickets out there. If you're thinking about it, if you're thinking of going Canadian Grand Prix, honestly, one of the best uh, Grand Prix that you can go to. It's if you're a blast, the whole city shuts down for this. It's awesome. Yeah. Get if, there. if you're wondering whether you should do it or not, and if you're an American, if you're an American and you're thinking, oh, maybe maybe I'll, I'll skip this one. I'll save some money and go to go to Austin. No, come to this one first. You'll see why. Montreal like, is. It's, it's yeah. just, it's just, it, it, it's different story. Better. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Julian. <coughs> excuse me, Julian Park on uh, F one dot co dot za. Also beating me, <laughs> beating me by about a hundred and twenty ish points. Okay, well that ship sailed. Well, th this one, <laughs> this is scored differently. This is like, this one's like out of. Like, he's got twenty five hundred and forty three, and I have twenty four hundred nineteen. Oh, okay. So, so it's percentage wise, it's percentage not. wise, look out. <laughs> All right, Julian. I keep on changing my All right, Julian. things. All right, Julian. Thanks. Guys, um, uh, Mike, what are you yeah. looking forward to this weekend? This weekend, uh, well, we're doing pre production for our next album. Oh, yeah. So, oh, we're doing that on Saturday and Sunday. Nice. nice. Uh, I'm going to try to get up early. What does that consist of pre production? What do you guys do? Uh, we, we're, we're talking to like a uh, producer. Tuning instruments. Not not so quite not not so much, but it's more, more or less um, into what we want it to sound like, like okay. how how it wants to come across as, right. as opposed to just us.
playing music, which is fine. But like when it comes to something that's being recorded, there's a little more. Yeah, for sure. Of course. A little more sort of. That's uh, your legacy, planning. man. Absolutely. Um, oh, I, I I wanted to thank you guys for coming out on last Saturday. I know sure. you guys. I didn't oh, get the cavern. You, I didn't get to see you guys off, but. Uh, oh, no, we left. That, that band after you sucked so much that we, <laughs> uh, we had to get out of there, man. See, like, my, my buddy Richard put it really well. I wanted to like those guys so bad. Yeah, you know what me I mean? too. I really yeah. did. I they was had like, some technical difficulties. Their guitar basically exploded. Oh, but they were bombing. Like, when, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when their guitar they wasn't lost. working, they oh, you know, have you ever like gone to a comedy club and had like, have you ever seen a comedian? It was like, noob. Bomb it. It was. No, it was just they were they were noobs. Really? Well, in the sense of like they just weren't seasoned. Yeah, yeah. And when after us, we've been playing only a year, but we we practice twice a week. We like yeah, constantly get together. Blew them out of the water. Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that dude had bad, just bad stage presence. That place was pretty cool. The cavern. Yeah, it was. It was pretty. I sweet. like it. I it was like, like the, a, a the tavern that was kind of cave-ish. <laughs> Perfect name. <laughs> yeah, perfectly. It, 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 it used to be like the vault of a bank, though, right? Or you said you worked there Next before. Door. I worked in the building attached to it uh, a couple of years ago. Did you know behind there, there's a kind of a little parquet? Yeah. Like a like kind of a park with some benches, and it's a square. Yeah. And in the middle I think is... he knows what the definition of parquet is. Yeah, well, some people might. <laughs> it's sort of like a square. I get it. Because yeah. it was it was a town square at one point. Wasn't it the gallows? It's like a baguette, yeah, but it, a park. It was a gallows at one point. <laughs> there was the, a gallows of Toronto. We used, we used to have a gallows. The what? building beside it, the commissioner's building. I've been in the basement. There's a bank vault there with a dome domed roof. Yeah. And uh, the guy that... I think owned and I believe also lived in that building was the dude that ran the gallows. He, si- he signed the papers and I, I guess he owned that probably the park oh, at the land behind it. And uh, in the attic was like the servants quarters. That's where I was working, uh, doing some stuff there, <laughs> not being a servant. <laughs> but yeah, that's how sure. old it is. Haunted. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. I got some pictures from there at home. It was it's it was kind of mm. creepy in there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Yeah. Shit. Uh, Shit. But to get back at uh hopefully I'll get to see some uh Monaco on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, or or if not, man, uh how how about we just say that we will get together and try to do a uh a, a ride along for Monaco. Is that is that fair? We'll try. I'll I'll let you guys know because I'd like to do something on Sunday. Okay. For that, um, I'd like to watch it earlier, we, and with you guys. So, because like, yeah. if I try to watch something by myself, I'm like, I have so many questions. <laughs> I just don't know what's <laughs> happening. Why is he yelling? <laughs> but you know, that's. I'd rather watch it with you guys. Yeah, we'll we'll right. try to make an effort. How's that? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Ding, Play us out, dude. Ding, 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 ding. While I prepare our last. Uh, mojito. 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 Again, Guillermo, step up your game. <laughs> Come on, Guillermo. 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 Crush the sugar all the way. You can't have chunks in there.